Hello everyone, I am Tacit and welcome to the Gems of War stream. So today, uh, of course, the biggest thing that we're going to be doing, and pretty much the only thing that we're going to be doing, is a lot of the new faction. Uh, we ended up getting a new faction uh, this morning of the Werewoods. It is a green-red faction associated to that of the uh, Urskea. Urskea Kingdom can now reach 13 stars as of this uh, faction. Uh, being added to the uh, game, so that's pretty nice. But uh, other than that, uh, it's a really weird faction. It uh, reminds me a bit of Warrens without any of the actual benefits of Warrens. Uh, it has a very similar shape uh, kind of going to it as far as its overall premise and order. Uh, it doesn't have as many treasure rooms though, and it has a much more annoying final battle. So these four troops, such I can't show them there, but these four troops are not nice. Um, they're not going to actually be useful for anything. But they're going to be really annoying to do pure faction with, uh, to say the least. But all of them have a transform mechanic on them. And whenever the enemy transforms, or yourself, you will get fully healed every single time. You'll revert back onto normal stats. And what's bad about this is the enemy will always have, like, twice if not higher, uh, more stats than you. So they're going to gain a lot more benefit from the transforms than uh, you will be. Also, any transforms that end up occurring are permanent for the entirety of the delve. So if something ends up transforming away... Uh, to something that you don't want, well, for the next uh, battle that you do, it will be that unwanted thing uh, until it ends up transforming back. So it's going to be pretty annoying. Uh, other than that, any of the life gain and uh, armor gain, or sorry, any of the attack and armor gain, they end up gaining from this uh, legendary. I don't even carry over either, so if you end up getting transformed, they will lose all the benefits from the, um, from the trait. So that's not going to be good. And other than that, um, yeah, him on his, uh, on paper is kind of like, okay. But the biggest issue is his 25% chance to become not good. <laughs> he basically has a really solid ability uh, with doubles Hunter's Mark, uh, convert into his own color, and skull spam with a double convert. But 25% uh, chance he becomes useless. So that's going to be pretty bad outside of this faction, uh, but very annoying inside of it. It will be your main kill option inside the pure faction, though. Other than that, Bear is your main man accumulator. Leprechaun is way superior, but in the delve itself, you have to use, um, uh, you'll have to use the, um, the Werebear. But um, other than that, it uh, has a 20% chance to transform back into Torbin. All three of these have a percent chance to go into Torbin. The bear has 20%, uh, the bird has 15%, and the wolf thing or the werecat has a 25% uh, to uh, transform back. He also has a triple damage poke that he ends up getting, and the werebird is basically useless. But uh, yeah, it's a really weird mix of faction, and they all have transform, which is annoying, particularly for pure faction. But anyways, hello everyone! Hope all of you have been doing well so far. Uh, let me go all the way back in chat. Hello, James! Yeah, the faction is Urskea. Uh, it did end up ultimately being Urskea, which is what we thought for the longest time. But then we kind of thought it wasn't, and then it was. So yeah, it's Urskea. Unless they're planning on changing it, but as it currently stands, it is indeed Urskea. You've been playing for almost a month now, and you're almost level 700, and... Oh wait, never mind, I already answered your question off stream. Uh, but if you still need help with that, let me know, Vortex, if you're still around. Uh, hello, Sass. Hello, uh, Zidikis. Yum, yum, nom. What are you eating on? Uh, let's see. The European-proof stream. Well, streaming a little bit later in the day does tend to work better for Europe times. Hello, Drock Savage. Uh, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Hello, Elite Gaming. Yeah, more uh, troops to kill in Urskea is actually beneficial, given that none of them have poison, uh, because that will make it so that one troop that's somewhat annoying with the 25% chance to revive is less likely to occur. Uh, this is why I ended up saying a little while back when we were likely going to get a buff to the kingdom. We got a slight nerf when we got that 25% thing. However, these troops being Urskea is a full benefit, because none of them, for the sake of instant killing, is really going to get in your way, because none have immune to poison. So uh, it should end up working out nicely. Uh, let's see... Uh, da, da, da. hello, Michael. Can you win pure faction five, uh, 500 with horde 170 tier seven, nine times with 50% kingdom bonus? I feel like the answer should be yes. I'm going to be running it probably with 207. So uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to need more stats than that. Actually, I might go a little bit higher than that in the buying of potions, but, um, I'm definitely going 200 for horde. But the amount of stats you mentioned does sound like it should hopefully be enough. But I haven't actually gotten to test this, so I'm not sure how annoying it's really going to be. It should be the most annoying faction in the entire game, so... Do be mindful of that if you are going for it. 
because it's quite arguably the uh, hardest faction in the game. The only thing that might be har harder is Sea of Sorrows, but this one might even be harder just due to how Transform works. I just haven't gotten to test it yet, so don't know. Pretty sure very few people are at 500 yet, which you can kind of see. How many people are at 500? We'll know immediately just by checking leaderboard. Pretty sure it's only like a dozen or so. Hasn't been out that long. Gosh, people grind like crazy quick. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Though some of them might use rush method. What was that, 15 did I just say? 15 people have already gotten it so far. Are any of those 15 people here? <laughs> How did it go? Let me know. I highly doubt it. Well, you never know. Let's see, do I recognize any of these names that might be here right now? I don't believe so. Anyways, uh, first things first. Let's go ahead and upgrade this thing. I still have an upgraded horde, as you can tell, by our level uh, zero. As far as the methodology uh, between or about uh, upgrading these, uh, generally how I go about it is coin purse up to 20, um, gold ring up to 50, chalice up to uh, 100. Though you can go a little bit higher than 50 on the gold rings. And um, king crown to about 150. And then Genie Lamp and uh, Sacred Treasure for everything beyond that. I believe I'm going to be ignoring coin purses, though, this time around. Just go to rings. Just because we have so, so many rings. Um, well, then again, I don't know. Because we don't really have any purpose for coin purpose otherwise. I guess we'll do it twice. Why not? We'll just do it twice and then go right into coin rings or gold rings. And then we'll do the gold rings up to about um, maybe like 60 or 70. Just because we have a, quite a bit of surplus of it. I'm also a bit low on chalices for whatever reason right now. Hello, Matt. Welcome. Yeah, with higher stats, it shouldn't be too bad. The biggest issue is if you don't have enough damage to wipe them out with a skull spam. If your skull spam does not get a kill, you're going to have a problem when doing them. Hello, Raven. Uh, I need a good team for this faction because you can't use uh, Iron Guts. Uh, and your favorite, and you've crafted, uh, you just crafted Zugoth. Oh, that's good, because I have a team for you, because I actually built a team entirely around Zugoth I showed for the video, but I just realized now I haven't showed any of them for the stream right now. Uh, let me go take my tributes. But, um, this right over here is the teams I end up making for the video thing. Uh, this is what I'm probably going to be using for most of the earlier ones. Uh, Mountain Crusher, Rowane, Double Leprechaun for the very early battles, then switching to Arskia Shield, Rowane, Double Leprechaun. Uh, that just reminds me, I didn't bother building a Tesla team. But uh, this is the Zugoff one. Uh, do keep in mind you don't need uh, Ubiset for this, but um, uh, I just put it here just so we'd have another instant kill. But you can go with another Leprechaun or go for another damage source, as long as it has a instant kill upscaling damage. But uh, Mountain Crusher, Zugoff, Leprechaun, uh, Ubiset is why I end up running. Not sure if you have Ubiset, but you can go second Leprechaun or something else there. And uh, the whole premise, of course, is around Zugoff, which you just said you just crafted recently. So I should be able to get the faction done. Uh, Zugoff's a great option for whenever you can't use uh, Iron Gut uh, in a faction, uh, just because he serves a very, very similar uh, purpose to that of uh, Iron Gut. And um, yeah, those were the main two teams. Yeah, I should have made a Tesla team, um, but you do have access to red. Uh, I believe green also gives us... Um, what does green have that would mana generate for that isn't Leprechaun? Though I guess you could just use Leprechaun. If in doubt, use Leprechaun. <laughs> because it's such a great mana generator. And this is what I'm running for Pure Faction. Wear Bear with Triple Beast Master. Though keep in mind, by the fifth battle, our team will be completely different. Regardless of what team you run. So I'm just starting that for um, a decent start. Yeah, Holy Stain Asteroid. That was it. Because you can use the green for 50% human start. That would work. But yeah, you just are scared shield in the Tesla is the basic premise. I might give it a try. I'm probably going to stick with Rowane for most of it, though. But anyways, let me keep upgrading this horde already and get this up. And then we'll worry about uh, teams and getting through. We're definitely running Rowane initially, though, for the lower levels. Just because of how quick a kill it is. Which uh, banner did I have for a Rowane team? Um, I forget off the top of my head. It's something green-brown related, most likely. It's probably like a plus one brown into double green. Uh, exactly so. <laughs> it's a plus two green into, uh, one brown. That's particularly good for the Mountain Crusher version. I'm not sure if there's a plus two brown plus one green that works for this team. Let me double check. Does that exist? Why do I feel like that banner doesn't exist? Um, it does, but it's minus blue, so you can't. So, um, yeah, probably just going Mushroom Banner is fine for it then. Regardless of which version you run. 
It's definitely better for the Mountain Crusher version. Uh, let's see. But yeah, we don't have a proper banner for the other one yet. Because it's minus blue, which you ideally do not want to minus one your Rowan. Though it's not too big a deal, since if you need to cast or ski a shield multiple times, a minus blue, I guess, wouldn't actually make that big of an impact. So never mind. You might actually want to run the plus two brown, plus one green for the later one. Just because you don't really have any downside to the minus blue. Given that Rowan's only going to cast once anyways. Unless you're doing the double cast method of it. But I feel like the single cast is better. Unless they have something that has like a revive on it. You use the Phoenicia team uh, to grind out trophies. Nice. Yeah, I haven't been using that method just because it only works with red hero classes. But when we go and finish out whatever few red hero classes we still have left, uh, we'll definitely do it. And by red hero classes, I mean any hero class that has red storm specifically. If the hero class doesn't have red storm, it won't work for it. Oh, so this might be one of the earliest times we've ever hit quality 10. We're going to have it by um, 59 if we get lucky here. We did not. Not like it matters. Quality. And getting them leveled, you're automatically going to be getting the quality up. I almost even forget the quality is even a thing. There it goes. 61. I think we've done it at 50 something before. I right, should probably switch to chalices now. I just feel like we're a little low on treasure though. Though we have a lot of crowns. Actually, we have a lot of these higher one, uh, ones down there. Um... Okay, let's go start switching over because we're actually a little low on gold. I don't want to run out of gold here either. I don't think we're going to run out of gold, but this is going to be the lowest we've been in a very long time. Because I'm about to drop down to like 3-4 million gold by the time we get this level 200. And I definitely wanted to get it to level 200 as this faction is going to be super annoying. I'm not sure if I'm going to give it 50% or not. We easily can since we have a surplus of brown. I'm not sure if I want to though. If I knew what the next few factions were, I probably would. But the problem is we don't know that info until next patch. And next patch obviously didn't get here yet. Unless it's planning on coming this weekend, but I highly doubt it. It's probably next Monday or next Tuesday is when we get next patch. It's also a pretty good sign that we might have some kind of decent troop balance for once. Because they tend to not do too much troop balance. But they normally try to avoid doing patches on, um, on Guild War weeks because of troop balance. Whenever they have a bunch of it. But yeah, it is possible to get Urskia to um, 15, level 15 right now, kingdom level. It's 13 stars, being uh, 15 its level with the browns. And at this current moment in time, if you do want to use your brown... Um, if you want to use your brown uh, deeds, currently at this exact moment in time, Urskia is the most value that you would get from it. And for that reason, I might upgrade it. It's not going to be that big of a difference on stats, but uh, it will help nonetheless. Okay, almost there. We'll do one more set after that. Then we'll probably switch into crowns. I really wish you could upgrade smaller treasure to bigger treasure. Okay, and now we should probably start switching over to crowns. Because we are going to run out of treasure otherwise. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. Uh, maybe. Yeah, we should. Start switching to crowns. Yeah, we're still gaining five levels per thing. That's nice. Uh, you've been having a lot of luck with the uh, pallet, uh, what pallet team? Arskia, Shield, Leprechaun, and Paladin? Wait, Paladins? Um, I guess you could run it that way. I feel like Rowan would be a little bit better value, though, since it hits multiple things at once. I don't think I've ever mentioned the Paladin version of it. Uh, mostly because Paladin is slower than um, than Rowan. But you can do it with Paladins. I wouldn't advise doing it with Paladins. At that point, you might as well use your Tesla or Rowan. Main reason why those two tend to be used is they can hit multiple things at once. Whereas Paladin can only hit one at a time. I 
Oh, we're almost there. A little bit more treasure. Once we get to the final treasures, it goes super quick. It's all smaller treasure that takes longer. I used to suggest Paladin teams a lot when the game first came out. But they were pretty meta back then. I don't think I've ever suggested a Paladin team since the first two years of the game. I think the only other time I might have is White Helm... Um, uh, or not White Helm. For Priest hero class events. It's because Paladin works pretty good for that compared to the options that you have. But I wouldn't really advise it for anything else. Unless you're super early game and don't have other options yet. Because Urskaya Shield with Paladins is pretty cheap. But Rowane with Urskaya Shield is also pretty cheap. So I uh, don't necessarily need to go down the Paladin route. It's green-red, correct? Yes, this faction is green-red. So Rowane with Mirage Queen and Leprechaun works. Yes, you can do that. I'm running it with double Leprechaun though. And the reason for that is we get more gold. And we also have the Enchant, which is already giving us... Not exactly half mana start, but, uh, you know, it gives us two mana immediately. And after we cast Leprechaun once, that's going to be four mana. So we pretty much already have half mana start just due to the enchant potion. There's not as much of a need to actually put it on our team. If you're ever wondering why I do double Leprechaun instead of um, Mirage Queen in those instances, that's mainly why. Unless you specifically need the Mirage Queen for its curse. I don't tend to use that as much in factions. Especially with lower level um, things. Like for Truffles, I'd probably still use it. But for um, Rowan, you wouldn't need to, because it's only a 12 mana compared to 17. Also, look at all of our gold go away. Poor gold stack. We should probably start using Genie Lamps. We have a lot of spear higher uh, rarity uh, treasure right now. Could I make a video of the team showing and playing it? Which team? The Paladin team? I honestly would not advise it, though. But the whole point of Paladins is to one-shot everything. It's just one-shot methods don't tend to work as quick. Unless they have some kind of side effect like Zugaf or Ubistet. Or any of the other few. No, it's ever so slightly short. Okay, let's see how we can do this. Hmm. I'm going to have to do it with excess of 50, I think. Is there no combination that will work perfectly? Doesn't look like it. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I'm like trying to figure out this exact. There we go. <laughs> sure, let's go with that. Why not? I guess that works. Oh no, I'd rather do it like this, I think. Do that. And then just throw in like two crowns. This is save the sacred treasure for later. Ooh, those are some pricey two crowns. Well, rip gold stack. I think that's the lowest my gold has been in the last like year. <laughs> we need to go farm gold, gosh. I need to go back to Explore 12 rather than doing the lower level ones. But it's because I keep trying to level up that hero class. But uh, gosh, do we need to farm gold. Also, this is from missing two Vault events, by the way. This is what happens when you miss two Vault events. <laughs> but yeah, we need to go farm gold, gosh. We are so, so, so ridiculously low on gold right now. I like to keep a reserve of at least 10 million. Also because factions like this take a lot. And also, you never know when they might add a new feature that ends up needing it. Also, uh, I didn't make any mention of this. They are selling a Orb of Ascension right now for uh, 10 bucks with some gems. Uh, some people might consider it worth it. Uh, that is pretty pricey still, though. But um, if you really desperately need one, it could be considered worth it. But anyways, there we go. Max it out. All good to go. Now, the question is, should we buff our Skia? Let me go double check how far we can actually currently see in spoilers. How many factions ahead. I believe we can only see one faction ahead, but if we can see more than one, I might consider upgrading it. Um, let's see, where's Kingdoms? How many factions can we currently see ahead? We can currently see one faction ahead, and it is Shen Tang, I believe? Uh, yes, it's Shen Tang. And the next one isn't named. Uh, 
Let me see. We can see what troops there are. Does it name it here? No, we don't have any info on it yet. And we won't until next patch. So all we know is that next one is not a brown. Because Shantang is red, I believe. Uh, actually, I actually could forget what color Shantang is. I'm pretty sure it's not brown. Uh, Kingdom. It is yellow. How many browns do we currently have? What number is it? Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, the number is 43. And theoretically, we only need to put 12 in there. If we don't want to use any um, Imperials. Oh, no, we don't. Never mind. We have to use uh, 20 if we want to get the full bonus. Oh, no. Do we want the full bonus? I almost leaning towards no. Just because once we complete this faction, we have no need to ever come back here. What is every brown faction in the game? Uh, where's the list of that? I know it's Urskea, Kazeel, Drakzoom, and I cannot remember the rest. I know those three. I don't think any of them had good stats. Which is one of the reasons why um, it's kind of up in the air as to which one to do. Because none of them were particularly good to do. I both don't... I both do and don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I'm not going to make the... I'm not going to do it yet. But we might end up doing it. We'll see. Anyways. Uh, let me actually not start with the faction yet. What I want to do instead is start doing these three free ones that we have. We're just going to kill this out with a Rowane team real quick. Uh, where's my Rowane team? Switch in Arc Magnus. I showed it without it just because... Um, uh, just so people copy-pasted it with the right hero class. But obviously I'll be using it with Arc Magnus because I need it leveled. So we're just going to be doing that. Uh, paste team. Paste. Um, get a mountain there instead. Uh, mountain. And uh, banner should already be correct. And anything else we need to go do? Yes, change hero class to Arc Magnus. And then copy the team again because I'm going to need to put it into the other one because it doesn't save it, I don't believe. And there we go. Okay, and now we can just go run through all of this real quick. Get our free kills, get our free class XP, and go from there. Also, by the end of this stream, I ideally do want to hit um, level um, 70 on this hero class. I believe we'll be able to passively without going out of our way at all just by doing the faction. And then we can finally go over this hero class, which I haven't been able to make a video for yet. Uh, is Drifting Sands brown or yellow? Why oh, do I feel like it's brown? Also, I hate this layout so much. This is even worse than, um, than Warren's. I compare it to Warren's, but it's even worse than Warren's. Overall, this is probably one of the more annoying delves in the entire game. Mostly due to pure faction. But this layout isn't much better either. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Chris Border. I didn't see that. Urskea, Blackhawk, Bronze, uh, Broken Spire, Drox Zoom, Drifting Sands, and Kazeel. Of those, the ones that have the best kingdom bonuses are Urskea, Blackhawk, Drox Zoom, and, K and um, Kazeel. So those four. As far as stats, I believe every single one of them gives HP and armor. Though I'm not sure if one of those gives attack. Urskea's HP. Blackhawk, I think, is attack. Broken Spire's HP or armor. Drak Zoom, I believe, is armor. Um, Drifting Sands, I forget, but I know it's HP or armor. And KZL was definitely HP. Hmm. Yeah, Blackhawk is attack. So if we wanted to have Iron Gut with one higher attack, we could do Blackhawk instead. I believe it's the only one out of any of the browns that have attack, rather than HP or armor. And its bonus isn't that bad either. Gosh, what on earth is this layout? I assumed after we did that room, we'd be able to do that room. Apparently the answer is no. Oh, I hate this delve so much. <laughs> I can already see this is gonna be annoying. 
We might start rush methoding it early. Definitely won't for the early battles though, just because it's super quick kills. But um, this is definitely going to be an annoying faction. I almost killed it with skulls. There we go. What's the fastest gold farm currently? Explore 12 with a quick kill team. Particularly running um, the Scorpius or Yali combo on Urskea Kingdom. And that became even easier as of today because they added four more troops, all of which are easy kills. They added a troop a little while ago that ever so slightly slowed it down. But the four new troops that were just added actually sped it up. Because those four troops make it less likely that you get the troop that slows it down. Yeah, we're getting a Lunar Pet on uh, Wednesday. Also, I still want to cover the best teams of uh, last year video before then. I need to do that sometime very soon. Hopefully this weekend. Or at least record it this weekend. Not sure if it'll be out this weekend. Because Lunar New Year is right around the corner. I believe it's the 25th if I'm not mistaken. So before that new year, I definitely would want to get those kind of videos out. Also, isn't the year of the dragon this year? Pretty sure it is. There we go. Okay, uh, and then we take this, and then we'll reserve the final one. Maybe we'll do it as well, but definitely at least reserve it. Grab the splody splood. Grab other splody splood. Oh, what do we take here? Take our brown over there. And I'll be enough to clear it out with Rowan. Actually, I probably should be using Mirage Queen right now for these. Because we don't have potion effects right now. Oh, it's the Year of the Rat. My bad. I always lose track of it. I believe it was the, um, the pick or boar last... Or the boar, I mean, uh, last, um, last year. I forget what the cycle is for it. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll go for that for now. I was going to make sure I don't accidentally do the final room. The way this delve is set up, you could actually do it accidentally pretty easily. And trying to go all the way around, you can accidentally go, oh, let's go to the faction room. And then uh, accidentally do the final boss. Because it's technically in the circle going around. Said you have to make like a zigzag right next to it to go all the way around. Because once we reach this battle, we'd have to go do uh, this battle. We can't do that one, and obviously we can't do that one. Because if we do that one, the delve ends, and that one we can't reach because of how it's set up. Oh, why did I not take the purple there? And dead. Almost off of skulls alone. And now dead. Also, the reason why I'm doing these beforehand, if any of you are ever wondering why I am, uh, it's just to utilize them for a two times bonus. When we do it like this, we get two times bonus for every single one of the loot rooms. And this can only be done as you're progressing forward. And uh, the reason why you do the kingdom or the faction one, specifically in the faction, before you do the event is because if you do it in the events, your faction will permanently be increased. However, if you do it through your faction, it will not permanently increase the um, the event. So you always want to do your faction ones before you do the event ones. So that you can utilize them for very low level uh, two times multipliers. Hello, Lee. Welcome. Uh, get the 
last four mana. And dead. Yep. Oh no, Cap, come back. <sighs> but yeah, the other one I'm just going to delay for now. Since obviously we could delay it for any amount of time. Probably delay till tomorrow or tonight. But I need to get these done at least so we could go use up all of our sigils for today. Or not the sigils, but the, um, you know, whatever those are called. Those little scroll things that we have that we can do, do delves with. Outside of the event. Uh, where were the delves, uh, devs thinking? Making such an RNG pure faction team? I have no clue. It's an interesting premise. It's just an ultra annoying premise to deal with. It's it, it's all about as annoying as what pre-nerf Stone Song Eerie was going to be. Stone Song Eerie before they modified it was going to just be constant summoning every single turn by the enemy, making it near impossible or literally impossible to do. But then they end up nerfing it last minute, so it wouldn't be as annoying. But they didn't end up nerfing it for this one. They just kept it annoying. It's not as annoying as pre-nerf Stone Song area would have been, but pretty close. Yep, there's our 20 gems for today already. Grab all of our loots. Delay the room for two times multiplier. And now we can go do the actual event. Which I still haven't completely bought up yet, which I should probably go do. Uh, let's see. I only bought up to the weapon for the video. It's kind of funny. I bought up to the weapon during the video so that I would remember to go over the weapon. And then I forget to go over the weapon. <laughs> so, good job. But I bought exactly up to the weapon, if I'm not mistaken. So I could show it for the video. And then, whoops, forgot to show it. Uh, but it deals uh, damage to the first two enemies. boosted by uh, Allied Beast and then Summon the Beast. It's going to be useless because Beastly Bow is going to be better than it. Um... It does have Leech Storm into its own color, so it kind of is that going for it. But uh, overall, probably an underwhelming weapon you're never going to use. But anyways, that brings our cost to um, uh, 110, or 1,110 is how much it costs to go from Tier 1 to Tier uh, 6. And now every single thing we buy costs an additional 200. So for now, we'll probably buy... I don't know, how many do you guys think we need? I feel like I'm leaning towards 7. We might need more stats than that, though. But I feel like seven's a nice number to go for for now. What would that bring our cost up to? That would bring our cost to 2,510 gems if we do seven. Mm, well, I'm going to be rushing quite a few of them. You did nine. I don't know. What numbers do you guys think we need? I'm leaning towards seven. Everyone said nine or ten. Is it going to be that hard? Gosh. Hmm. Well, nine, we're bringing up to 1,910. If I'm doing rush, if we're buying nine, I'm probably going to use rush method to get up then. After we finish like the first ten, like after Rowan stops working, I think we're just going to start switching to um, to um, rushing the entire delve down. If we're going to bother buying that many packs, if we need that many stats, um, I guess I'll go nine because that's two thousand nine hundred ten gems then, total, right? Because nine one thousand eight hundred. 1,800 into that is 2,910. Yeah, it would cost us 2,910 gems. And we'll get some of that back, but very little. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll do it that way. So let's keep count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, and no, unfortunately, we're not going to do a ten. I think we burned through enough gems, gosh. We definitely need to go do next vault event. When is next vault event? I need to go look that up, like, right now. <laughs> we need so many gems. Uh, let's see. When is next vault event? I need to make sure my schedule is completely cleared. Because I've missed two of the last three vault events. And I did not want to miss this one, gosh. Uh, let's see. Let me get double check. When is next Vault event? Do we have a confirmed date? We should. Next Vault event is on January 31st, the last day of this month, which is uh, two Fridays from now, right? Yes, two Fridays from now. Two weeks from now is the uh, Vault event. 
So I need my schedule to be 100% clear then. Oh, except one thing. I actually have a court case I need to go to possibly that day. Friday morning. That's a fail. <laughs> it's not related to me at all. It's something related to my mom's divorce thing that she still hasn't bothered getting it. Um, and it's going to eat up like nearly my entire Friday. Actually, I probably won't be streaming that day as well. I still need to go double check with that because I have no clue what's going on. She might not even need me as a witness, but uh, there's a possibility she might. And it's going to eat up my whole day. So, um, that's unfortunate. <laughs> but uh, at least we'll have the other two days to grind it. So there's a possibility she might not need me for it, but I'll definitely have to go if she does. But anyways, I just realized we're not even set to armor. Uh, I should probably do that. Armor, armor, armor. Okay, let's go uh, run this down then. Let's go head over to um, the event and uh, go do it. Fight, fight. We already did all the other delays. We already bought all the potions. Should have nine sets of them. And we should be good to go. Let's paste in the team. For whatever reason, it doesn't remember your team from the other thing, but there we go. And that should be all we need for the earlier battles. I don't know, do I go Mirage Queen? I feel like we're going to have the mana, but you know what? I guess I'll go Mirage Queen. For now. It's when we need to double cast her, would we, um... I always forget, it's double I. I mean double A. How on earth do you spell Mirage Queen? There we go. I know she was usable. There we go. That's fine that it minuses our color. I'll do this for now. I will switch back to double Leprechaun, though. And then we'll probably switch to just rushing it down with, uh, like, an instant kill team or something. But anyways, uh, do we need to address anything? Nope. Let's go get more Arc Magnus and go get this thing leveled. Uh, one nice thing about factions is they give two XP per thing. <laughs> Maybe I can grind gnomes on your mobile in the court building. I'm not sure if you're allowed to do that. <laughs> oh, let's see. Are they just arranging of all events around your timetable? It feels like that. If I actually have to go to that court case, that means I've missed two and a half vault events of the last four vault events. Uh, yeah, we'll go down this way. Also, my new glasses should be coming in soon. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I went for the appointment on uh, Tuesday. And, um, yeah, should be coming in, they said, 7 to 10 days. So by next Tuesday, about the time when we get next patch is about the time I'll have uh, new glasses. A little bit after that. So very soon, TM. Yeah, a little after next patch, we'll have new glasses. Uh, two and a third, being all exact. Do they look different than my current glasses? They're a bit thicker and they're a bit blacker. Yeah, they're overall larger in size. And one nice thing about that is they should actually cover my full field of view. I also got an anti-glare thing for them as well. So that they wouldn't uh, glare as much from lighting. Because as you guys know from streams and stuff, you can sometimes see like the light. And it hasn't been that bad with the setup I currently have. Especially since it's a non-glare screen as well. The one that I use on the new computer. But uh, it's definitely noticeable on the older computer and just from the lights themselves. Uh, and it, it, with how I have everything angled, it hasn't been as bad recently. But I still want to get it that way. Because it's always annoying when you have a bunch of light in your face on the webcam. We always get new glasses every election year lately, just so I wouldn't forget to get new glasses. If, so I just do it every four years on election year. Because you're supposed to replace them every few years. So I just do it every fourth year on election year. So I don't forget about them. <laughs> Anti-glare is that to stop people from glaring at you. Rooms four and five can be treasure rooms. Center is always treasure. Yeah, it's... um. It's the exact premise of, um, of, um, Warrens, where you have one guaranteed treasure room and two potential treasure rooms. It's the exact same setup. 
It's just a slightly different layout. But it shares a lot of similarities with Warren's. Except for, it doesn't give Arcanes, unfortunately, I don't believe. I just haven't been paying attention to the final battle. I don't think it does. But if, if the uh, final battle was to give Arcanes, it's pretty much just a mirror of Warren's. is slightly different as far as loot is concerned. Let's see. Does this give Arcane? I'm pretty sure the answer is no. No, it does not. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to doing Pure Faction. It is going to be a very time-consuming Pure Faction. Not only do you have to go through so many rooms, which will make it so your troops will transform into something completely different by the time you reach the end, but you're also going to have to deal with the fact that um, uh, they will constantly keep healing once you do reach the final room, to a point that you might not even be able to realistically kill them if your stats aren't high enough. Which is going to be a nightmare. Well, we've all up enough that we should hopefully have enough stats. We're 2,910 gems in. Normally, a pure faction takes around 2,000 to 3,000. We're already at the pretty much the top end. The legendary even got nerfed to attack armor and to attack life. Oh, they did change it last minute. Okay, so his trait is unique. I said it during the video that it's, uh, there's another troop that has the exact same, but I actually lied. Uh, it was going to be the last same, but they changed it last minute. Because there's a troop that gives uh, plus two attack and HP to all uh, beast allies. And he does attack and armor instead of attack and HP. He was originally going to be attack and HP, but they changed it last minute. Both of them use the trait pretty badly. Beasts don't really gain too much of a benefit from it. So far out of any of those, like, double, um, Hindla has the best. With double life and double magic to, um, two giants. Out of every single one of those concepts, she has the strongest one. Well, so far so good. And we're getting a decent amount of levels. I didn't really make much mention of it when we got it, but we um, end up getting a level there. I believe we're level, what is that, 68? I'm pretty sure. Yep, two more to go. We're almost there. But this is why I didn't spend extra time last night getting levels. Because I knew we'd easily reach 70 today without even trying. Because this is going to keep passively gaining XP throughout the factions today. To the point that we're 100% going to have level 70 by the end of stream. Actually, so much so, we'll hand out redeem code once we hit level 70. <laughs> How about that? On our hero. I don't know, maybe I'll do it a little bit earlier than that. Like when we hit 69 on it. It's a funny number. Yeah, we'll even gain a hero EXP or level, possibly. Instead of just a class EXP level. Uh, sure, Anton. Uh, let me go get the browser up so I can go copy, copy that team. I hate that this program doesn't do that automatically anymore. Uh, let me go bring it up. Let me see, what team is this of which he speaks? You saved $85. Oh, hello. That would be my own ad on my own stream. Good job. Uh, another honey ad, gosh. Feels like there's like a billion and a half honey ads. Oh, uh, what am I looking for? I am looking for your team, so I can go copy, copy. Also, feel free to leave a like. We almost reached double digits likes. We're just sitting on nine right now. But, uh, let me go put that there. Let's see what team you mentioned. Uh, paste team. What is this? Tina, Tina, Reflect, and Leprechaun. Uh, that could work, though it falls off by about 200 or so. 
I ran this for Warrens, actually. Or not this exact team, because obviously Reflect didn't exist at the time. But uh, Double Tina Premise. Um, it's okay. It, it does work. Um, it's, mo it's mostly good for around the level 100 to 200 range is where it shines the best. Anything lower than that, it's not as quick. And anything higher than that, it's slow compared to instant kill options. But for the level 100, 200 range, it works pretty well. I honestly would not advise using it for any other range, though. Though it is kind of interesting with Reflective Good. You can actually do that into Enrage and Tina's higher damage. Which can basically one-shot a lot of things, at least at the lower range. But uh, yeah, level 100 to 200 is the only range I would use that for. I would not advise using it for much else. Because it does slow down quite a bit. But yeah, I used to run that for 110 Warrens. Not that exact team, but a similar premise of double Latina. Obviously, we don't run Warrens daily anymore. Oh, there we go. We doubled our likes. Thank you, everyone. Helps out a lot. Uh, let's see. Move that down. Get a split down. Yeah, three Nishas take a very, very long time to get. I still have yet to get a single Nisha since we've gotten three Nishas. But that is because I haven't been doing as much Explore 12. Most of the Explore I have been doing has been lower level Explore to power level hero classes. Like, for example, Arc Magnus, which we almost have at 70. Very soon. Yeah, quite a few things can gain a decent benefit from Nisha's. I feel like Truffles gains the biggest benefit, though, of any troop in the game. Truffle and Tina. And by Tina, I mean, um, not Tina 9000, but, um, wait, not Tina. What's her name? Yagwe and Queen Titania. Titania is the one I meant to say. But, um, Queen Titania and, um, Truffle. Gob Truffle. King Gob Truffle. Gains the biggest benefit of any two troops from having additional magic. Queen Titania because it has 50% Fairy Fire. The easiest in the game. And Truffle because it has infinite loop with AoE damage. And of course both of them are full AoE damage. Um, You can run Gob Truffle if you want. Uh, you'd have to run Leprechaun with uh, Truffles if you want to. Rowan for these lower levels is quicker. And I feel like I'm going to try to Urskia shield route this time. That'll run instant kills. Just because the really good Truffle team's not available. Though you can still get away with Truffle, yes. Because you are allowed to use uh, green. And Truffle is, of course, green. The uh, Truffle team is not as good if you, whenever you don't have access to Forest Troll. And we do not for the stove. It's still usable without it, but it's um, it loses a lot of its value, particularly for higher level doves. Oh, so once we get this hero class to um, level 70, I think we're going to start skipping doves. Just go down a straight path to the um, to the boss room. Yeah, while you're in Rowane instant kill range, or even Rowane double kill range, it's better just to use Rowane. Once you hit Rowane triple hit range is when you decide to use something else. Either an instant kill or something that can upscale a bit better, or using it with Urskia shield. Also, once we need to start multicasting, I'm switching to double Leprechaun instead of one Rowane. Ninety percent of the time, once you're uh, in two times Rowan, you can use shield, and then for no loss. Wait, what? Once you're in two times Rowan, you can just use shield, 
And then for oh yeah, with um, once you reach that range, you can just cast one shield to uh, get her to one shot range. However, you still need to cast twice, regardless. But it might be a little bit quicker since they use different colors. Hello, Viper! Welcome! No, Tina's not that slow at all. She has a lot of concentrated damage. You're at that high of a level range, you're still getting quick kills, gosh. I expect her to be a little bit slower that high. Because it takes like three or four Casper to kill at that high of a range. Because she'll be hitting what, like 80 something, I think? But then again, never mind, her magic's pretty high. Never mind, she'd be hitting like, um, with this many potion effects, she'd be hitting around, uh, like 120 per hit. If not higher. So yeah, I guess it could actually be decent then. I forgot, with this many potion effects, she would actually be able to last a bit longer. If you're running level 200 horde with like 7 plus potions, I guess you could actually run to about 300 then. With that many stats. Normally when I say she only works to about uh, 200, I'm referring to um, like the 100-200 range particularly. I'm referring to uh, no potions. So I guess with potions, she can actually go a bit longer. You got an Undyne from Legendary Tasks? Nice. That is very lucky. It's still good for blue Guild War defense. And Undyne. I don't feel like I use it much these days, though. It is extremely situational. Oh yeah, what do we need? What do we need? Let's go get our slowdy spoons. Get our Rowan there. And he's down. Level 8 chest. Claim all that mess. And on to our next one. And team's still holding up strong. We are, should be getting to the point soon where we can't one-shot, though. We'll know once we hit this tier 5. Let me have to go for it first. But how many potions we have, this should last a little bit longer for one-shotting, that's for sure. Because how many extra stats is that? That is 63 additional stats. Not even counting our horde. Just off of um, potions, we're getting 63 additional stats. What's your average damage with Ro Rowan? Uh, can figure out what level it should start changing. Uh, our average damage right now is... Uh, let's see. 567 is our current damage. 567. Or sorry, 5, um, why did I say that? It's, um, well, math. Um, <laughs> hold up. I did maths wrong. Or I think I did. Let me redo that real quick. 
It's, um... Oh, no, I was right. Never mind. 567. Never mind. I was right. I didn't look wrong for a second. Oh, yeah, this is going to be the most annoying pure faction in the entire game. The stealth. Because they can just constantly keep full healing. And while you can do the same to gain much more of a benefit from full healing than you would. The only way you're really going to win is by getting really lucky off your skull converts. And or by getting really lucky by them constantly becoming birds. If they become birds a lot and you don't become birds a lot, you'll have a big advantage over them. Because the bird is distinctly weaker than everything else from the faction for whatever reason. Not sure why they made the bird so weak. Or even to make the faction a little bit more bearable. And there's some extra sigils. But I don't think we're really going to be needing much extra sigils. Given how many we already have from buying it up. Actually, I believe we almost have all the sigils to make it already with what we currently have. Yeah, we have 41, which means we actually only have to find uh, two Val Ravens. If we find two Val Ravens, which would be better in that many battle battles, gosh, we have enough to do it today, sigil wise. But we're probably going to be doing it tomorrow night, Pure Faction. I am going to be using Rush Method, I believe, tomorrow. So I believe tomorrow stream we're going to go all the way to 500. And then we try Pure Faction tomorrow night. I don't know. Maybe we'll try Pure Faction during tomorrow morning stream. It'll be the first time I do it during the morning stream rather than the nightly stream. But given how annoying this faction is, we might need to throw more attempts at it to actually get it up. And for that reason, um, I might actually do it Saturday morning with Pure Faction 500. Which I believe will be the first time we ever do Pure Faction in the morning. A 500 Pure Faction, that is. But I'm tempted to just because of how annoying it's going to be. Because I don't want the stream going to midnight if we do it on a nightly one. Because it probably would if we did. How many tier 7s did I buy? 9. I spent 2,910 gems total. And if I buy one more pack, I believe that's the most expensive pure faction we've ever done. I don't think I've ever gone over 3,000 for it before. And if we buy another pack, we'll be over 3,000. Yeah, we might go try to Tina team. Because Tina with this many extra stats actually would be viable. So would a Yasmin Ketris. Which is one of them that I was going to show but ended up not showing. The uh, Yasmin Mana Generator Double Ketris. We can run Apothecary for it. Please, we do have access to green. Also, once we get this hero class to level 70, I can start using any hero class I want. Oh, I might still use it to keep leveling it or leveling something. Maybe we'll search the Diabolus so we can start getting some XP on him as well. I believe Diabolus is the only hero class I don't have above level 70 yet. Well, and this one, of course, but this one will be very soon, given that we just hit level 69. I was behind that code at 70. I didn't realize we'd hit 69 so quickly. Gosh. Devils give such quick XP. Oh, so we're starting to get to the point where this team's getting a little bit less viable. I thought that was supposed to be full mana. Now it is.
Okay, that definitely did not one shot. Yeah, let me go do a weird adjustment to this team real quick. I'm gonna go down this route with it. That's not really a weird adjustment. <laughs> this was the exact team that I was mentioning for the thing. But, um, yeah, let's go with this. I think it's time. And now I can still one-shot. Well, I've tried double Tina before. However, I've never tried double Tina with um, 72 extra stats on top of faction bonus. Like, I've tried it with just faction bonus before, but I've never tried it with an additional 72 stats on top of faction bonus. So there is a chance it could be very broken. Yeah, I'll add the three niches as well. I'm waiting until we get a little bit deeper before we switch into something like that, though. For when we do try it. Hey, a Cedric Groom. Another benefit of having double Leprechaun. Unfortunately, Cedric is so deep in the delve. That skull makes it so we can just cast against it. Oh, I hate when that takes away my extra turn. I'm gonna do this to scare scare shield. And is dead as soon as we cast. Up oh, and let's see some merges. We're not gonna have enough mana, but we'll do it. And now we'll have enough mana, <coughs> even if we did nothing there. We might as well get our free gold, especially with that many Cedrics in play. Starting gold of uh, zero out of 500, instead of one or zero out of 100. Oh, we already got everything we needed, nice. And we won. Oh, almost won. And he doesn't get 20% dodge on us. Nice. Have you ever gotten all chests on a delve? Yes. It is possible. However, you cannot go above chest level 10. But yes, it is possible to get every single chest. But once you get to above 10, it just gives you 10. Even if you get to 11 or 12, it'll just give you a 10 instead. It is impossible to get above a 10. But yeah, it is technically possible to get chests from every room. But you don't get any upgrades beyond 10. It's very rare though. Because obviously you'd have to hit the percent chance for every single room. But it still only give you a 10 when that happens. This is what Antonin put, uh, the code. Which one is that? The Tina team? I saw it earlier, the Tina team. I'm going to be using it later. I'm just not using it yet, if that's what you're referring to, the Tina 9000 team.
I said the pure faction team. Oh no, let me go double check. Which one is that? No, stop playing out on my video. <laughs> I need it for the money, but it's always annoying. <laughs> when it keeps like every single time you refresh the thing, it uh, tries doing it again. Okay, anyways, let me go see what team this is. Uh, what team is this? Yeah, it's the Tina team. I'll keep it on paste. Actually, I might as well go put it somewhere else. Uh, uh, what's this? I don't need that anymore. Uh, paste team. Okay, we'll keep that there for if we use it. Or when we use it, I should say. We're definitely going to try it, at least. I'm just waiting till we get a little bit deeper, because at the moment it's not viable to use it compared to Verwayne, for sure. Once we get a little bit deeper, we'll definitely mess with it. They end up releasing a new Dragon Ball game. Oh, that's something that was announced yesterday. Um, Byleth was announced for Smash. A lot of people got salty that it wasn't not Byleth. <laughs> because um, there's like a billion Fire Emblem characters in the game. But honestly, out of every Fire Emblem character that was ever added to the game, that's the only one I actually cared about. So, I'm happy. But yeah, Byleth and Smash should actually be pretty fun. They end up giving him all the sacred weapons. That all the um, classes had. It's not a swordsman. It is the first polearm user in Smash. And he has a bow. And he has an axe. He uses sword for like three moves. I'm actually surprised more of the Fire Emblem characters weren't set up like that. It's set up more like Robin, but actually sword based. I didn't care for Robin. But I definitely like the premise of Bilo. How many tiers did I buy? Nine. We're currently 2,910 gems deep. And you're going to need a lot of stats to... Uh, uh, he's going to need a lot of stats to um, end up doing 500 pure faction. This is going to be one of the hardest, if not the hardest, pure faction in the entire game. A gems of wall. Though it might be worth considering getting it out of the way. Just because of how annoying it is. Because of course it's going to be months before you can do it again. And you'll have to do it on a Tuesday event rather than having a whole day to do it. So theoretically right now, this weekend is the easiest time to ever do this fact pure faction. Because you have three days to do it rather than one day. Because this faction, I'm pretty sure, is going to be near impossible to do without potions. Okay, can you not survive with 7 HP? That'd be great. Please, Skull, go. He's so close to death. What class and banner for what team? Uh, let's see. Have you considered playing any of the Dragon Quest games on the Switch? I haven't yet. Um, I heard the most recent one's pretty decent. I just haven't had the time to get around to it. And next order of business as far as RPGs are concerned is we need to go stream the rest of uh, Puzzle Quest, the HD remake. I still haven't finished it yet. Because I haven't played it since we last streamed it, which was like two months ago. Actually, like two and a half months ago. Actually, it's almost three months ago at this point, but we definitely need to go do it and finish it. I believe it's even on sale right now, too. And it's currently only a Switch exclusive. I can't talk. It's currently only a Switch exclusive for the HD remake. However, it probably will be on next gen consoles once they release. And it'll probably be on Steam eventually as well. But maybe it won't be because currently the uh, old version is still on Steam. So maybe they would take down the old version when they release the new one or something.
The most recent one has about 100 plus hours of gameplay. Oh gosh, that's a lot. You will buy more potions if you can't manage to clear it. You're going to try five tiers. Sevens. Clear every room combo. Um, I feel like it is going to require a lot. Even though we haven't reached it yet. You're going to need at least like half the stats of the enemy to be able to do it. Unless you just get super lucky with skull converts. The other big issue is you'd have no clue what you have the final battle. Because even if nothing on your team dies, your team can still be four completely random troops by the end of it. So why am I not using shield? I keep not using it. At this point, I might as well just use Mountain Crusher if I'm going to keep not using it. Really? That's unfortunate. Oh, why did I not take Skull? I keep forgetting our Skulls hit a billion damage with this many potion effects. Rowing, get full mana already. Go. There you go. Stop reviving. Yeah, this, uh, this faction has a lot of mandatory rooms combined with the fact that you can transform every single room into something that you don't want. There we go, that's what happens when we actually use shield. This melts immediately. There we go. You remember a long time ago? There was a magic key opening in Gems of War, yes. We did a magic key opening ages upon ages upon ages ago. That was almost five years ago. Or four and a half. Very long time. What about it? Yeah, Cunning's in uh, one of the slightly better ones. Isn't that the one that has instant kill too? Like the Devour on it? Was that the one with Devour? No, the the War, War, War Gear one was the one with Devour. But it still has purple counter cunning, which makes it decent. And also has Roshka bonus, which in some situations can be good. I keep forgetting to use our Scare Shield. I hit that. That is like the fifth time I've forgotten to use it already. And it slows down the battle by a lot when we do forget. We easily could already won if we could, would have already cast it. Oh, you just scrolled all the way down and saw it, yeah. It was one of the first videos we ever really did on the channel for the most part. That was before we even really started the channel. I don't really consider to start the channel until we started doing weekly content. Which was, I believe, April 20th of three years ago or four years ago i'm losing track but it was april 20th of um three or four years ago i should get double check right now let's see let's go to my youtube channel thing i'll tell you exactly uh easiest way to find it would be go to youtube go to uh why does it make it so hard to get to your own channel uh go to view channel go to I guess I could do video then oldest and just click on the oldest. I could also do it through the playlist, uh, but I'll do it through videos. Go to sort by order, do it based on oldest. And let's see where to go. 
Spring is spring events. Okay, it would be the four-year mark. Um, but yeah, April 23rd, 2016. So yeah, that means we'd be doing the channel for four years as of April 23rd. Nice. But April 23rd is the four-year mark of the channel. And the game is five years old right now. Oh, five and a half by the time it reaches that point. Oh, so we'll go throw that down. Yeah, we've gone pretty steadily. It's been nice. And I really appreciate all the support as it's really helped out a lot. Didn't know what I wanted to do out of college. And this was kind of just a side thing. And then it became more of a major thing. <laughs> and while I haven't been uh, able to do as much as of recently, um... I do really appreciate all the support, and it really helps out financially. I still don't make, like, an excessively good amount from YouTube, but it's um, definitely more than I ever expected I would. That's for sure. Oh, what do we grab for now? Let's take that for now. Still aren't worse than minimum wage, though. <laughs> but definitely way more fun, that's for sure. And I don't need to own a car for this, so I save a lot of money just from that, too. Since I don't need to pay for gas and um, car insurance and car payments just in general. Because one really nice thing about my location is since I have a job with, that I don't need to leave the house for. As well as um, a grocery store within walking distance. I generally don't have any need for um, a car. So I don't own one. Which saves a lot of money because car is a really big expense. What are my thoughts on Fortnite? Uh, I don't know. I never played it. I don't personally care for it. Any kind of shooter game I generally don't care for. Maybe on April 1st we'll play it just for fun. How many hours you've played of Gems of War? In total, it's like 15,000 if you count everything. Though Steam keeps track of just this account. And this account alone is at... um. 11,450 hours. However, that is by no means my total because it only tracks this one specific account. It does not count any playtime on mobile and it does not count any playtime on the Switch accounts or any of my other PC accounts. That's just on this specific um, thing through PC version. But yeah, I would say it's roughly around 15,000 hours. If you count literally everything. And that's over the course of five years. Which means you play this game for like on average 3,000 hours per year. Does that come out to average per day? Calculator, go. If we played it on average 3,000 per year, approximately, divided by 365, that comes out to about eight hours per day. However, you do have to keep in mind that does count idle time though. So, like, whenever we just have it on to take tribute or stuff, it does technically count that time. So, I've probably played less than that overall. Because you have to keep in mind that counts literally every second, including if we just have the game idling. Yeah, half of that would probably be a better estimate of how much I actually play. Which would be approximately four hours a day. Every single day since it has existed on average. Which is more realistic to how much I've actually played the game. Because also, even when I record videos, the, uh, the game is normally idling the entire time. Because I have it on in the background. While I'm waiting for it to render, or while making thumbnails, or while doing other things for videos. Same as whenever I check anything Gems of War related on the forum. I normally have the game on in the background. I'm not technically playing it, but I'm still doing something Gems of War related.
Yeah, generally anything above two hours per day on average, I would say is pretty active for Gems of War. Because you can do bare minimum with about 10 hours or less per week, which is under two hours per day. So anything above two or above is decently active. Because that means you're doing above minimum. Is the class level 70 yet? Oh, yes, it is. I'd even pay attention to that. But yes, I need to go uh, do two things. One is go give it its perk. But the other is um, we need to go and uh, hand out code. Yeah, you're right. Let me go do that. I did say once we hit level 70 on it. And we did hit level 70. Okay, let me go and uh, do that then. Grab that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Two things. Let me go do the perk first. And then we'll go do the... Um... Oh, well, I'm looking for. I'm looking for troops, that, class. Okay, let's go to the park and then we'll go do code. And for it, we'll go do an explosion. Could go plus one purple, but if we're going to be using it for this team or something, it's actually better to have the explosion. But we'll do that. Actually, I probably will be changing the hero class, though. I want to change it to the Abilist, I believe. Is that the only one that we have below 70? Because now we have Arc Magnus there. I believe it's the only one, the Abilist. Yep, the Abilist is at 60. I believe that was the hero class that came out while I was gone the other time. Uh, 70, 70, 70. Yep, it's the only hero class in the entire game I do not have above 70 yet. So we'll need to get on that. Get the Abolus to 70. I don't think we'll be doing that today, but gotta get him some more EXP nonetheless. Okay, anyways, let me go hand out code. Hello, David. Welcome. Uh, let me see. Where is it? Where is the code section? I believe I already used this code, but let me double check. I don't think I marked down last night's code. The answer is yes, I did not mark it down. So that means this one should be the right code. I should probably go mark that down right now so I don't forget tonight. Oh, there we go. Copy, copy, paste, paste. And here it goes. Go. There is the redeem code used on gemsofwar.com for the game code section. Your invite code can be found underneath your settings menu. Redeem code's right over there in chat. And gives the same reward as always. Two treasure maps. Uh, one gem key, 200 souls, and 2,500 gold. Enjoy, everyone. Okay, let me go mark this. Oh, that's not what I wanted to mark it with. Mark that. Mark that. Save. And there we go. And now we know for tonight. Just to make sure I don't accidentally use the wrong one. There we go. Okay. Next order business. Uh, let's grab all this. And there's the redeem code right there, too. Two treasure maps, one gem key, 200 souls, and 2,500 gold. Mixed with other stuff. <laughs> But uh, two treasure maps, one gem key, 200 souls, and 2,500 gold is what's from the redeem code. There it goes, go. Okay, next order of business. Let's go and switch to Diabolus once we can. And then keep moving forward. Oh, we can switch right now. Perfect. Okay. Uh, let me go switch Diabolus. Or two Diabolus, I should say. Uh, what do you even gain at uh, the other perk? Uh, nothing too good. You gain like a little red or death mark. But uh, nonetheless, actually, hold up. You have Firestorm, don't you? I'm actually not going to do Diabolist. I lied. Um, we can do this through trophy farming. It's one of the red ones. So for that reason, I'm actually going to stick with Arc Magnus. Also because... Um, well, actually, there isn't really any reason to get this to 100. But uh, I want to save the Red Storm hero classes for farming trophies. Because only, um, only Red Storm hero classes can do it. For that reason, I do want to hold off. So let's keep getting this thing higher. I don't think it gains that bit of benefit from 100, though. It has one of those useless 100 traits on it, which is unfortunate, but many classes are like that, where the benefit it gets is basically nothing. Yep, no problem for the code, everyone. Uh, will the redeem codes be allowed to be used once Steam is accessible via Xbox? I have no clue what they're planning for that. I assume so, but we'll find out. Oh, that awkward moment when you forget to cast our Skaya Shield when using this version of the team. I should really just use Mountain Crusher version if we're still at two hit range. Because the amount of times I've forgotten to use their Skaya Shield is very high.
Uh, you know what team uh, you'll be using for 250 to 500? Well, we're going to be trying the Tina team, but I might switch to Zugoff as well. Uh, we showed a Zugoff team for the um, video that we just posted a little bit right before we started the stream. And uh, there's a good chance I'll be running uh, um, Mountain Crusher, um, Zugoff, Leprechaun with Ubistet as my team. The redeem code does not exist. It should exist. And it shouldn't be out of uses yet either. However, if it's out of uses, it will say it's out of uses, not that it doesn't exist. Should still have enough uses for another 5-10 minutes. Uh, keep in mind, you might have added an extra space. Sometimes when you copy something, it adds an extra space for no reason, even if you didn't copy the space. It just adds a space to the end. Yeah, what, um... Uh, what, uh, well, gosh, it just blocked it. Yeah, what four just said. Yeah, sometimes it just adds a random use of space. Which makes the code not work. Yep, no problem, everyone. And we'll have another one later tonight. In about uh, six hours from now, or I should say six and a half. And tonight, we'll pretty much be doing the same thing we're doing now, obviously. Since that's the main thing we need to get done this weekend. Work on the faction. Also, I will be covering this hero class soon in a video. Uh, Purple Guild War Days tomorrow. So, um, maybe later tonight I'll end up covering it. But I do want to cover a video going over the new hero class that came out two weeks ago while I was gone. Oh gosh, I forgot to do it again. Got the gas or scare shield. I have done that way too many times so far. Uh, what else do we need? I'll take the blue right over there for now. And now we don't even need the other cast. Let's do it that way. Yeah, Xbox is going down a really, really weird path. Where they're almost making the Xbox into an alternative PC in a way. Like a cheaper alternative PC. Where they don't really care if they have uh, that many first parties. They just want as many games to be accessible as possible. It's a really interesting path. I've actually never owned an Xbox system ever. Let's see, we'll throw that down. Actually, why did do that? We already won. Didn't even need that. There we go. I had no problem. Oh, it just didn't work for whatever reason. Uh, sometimes reloading the page might work. If that does happen. And for no apparent reason. Because if you do it through the link, sometimes it might not want to work. So you would just have to go to gemsaward.com and click code section. For whatever reason, the page doesn't want to work properly. I know, we have a lot of lurkers. Glad you came out of the shadows. But we normally have quite a few lurkers, because I think we only ever have a few dozen people chatting. But normally have, um, obviously, several dozen people watching. But it's also a combination of people who might not have accounts or stuff. But hello, lurkers! And also just people who just, um, you know, just watch. <laughs> and they don't want to type or anything. Just have it on in the background. Oh, uh, which way do we want to go, actually? Why is everything 1.2 in the entirety of this stove? Gosh. Okay, I guess we'll take the top half, then. Like half, the, uh, half the dove is a 1.2 multiplier. Ah, 
Uh, don't revive. What are you doing? We're trying to slow down our win. Uh, Bill was on the other day. I think it was even on last night, if I'm not mistaken. He just wasn't here immediately, though. He's been around. He just hasn't been taken the first place yet. Or, you know, the first person that comments. Because he always uses the link to get there directly. So even if I haven't started the stream, he still brings up the page. Hello, Jason. Welcome. Because there's a link that you can use to bring up my streaming page, even when I'm not on yet. I post it occasionally. I normally don't post it often, though. It's because there's really no reason to be on that page. <laughs> for the most part. Because if you try typing there, I won't see it. Until we're actually doing a stream. Oh, did he end up having problems with his PC? That's unfortunate. One nice thing about having two PCs now is if one has an issue, which hopefully it won't, but if my old PC has an issue and finally dies, I have a backup now. I highly doubt my new one ever will. <laughs> or, you know, not ever will, but, you know, anytime soon. It's only two months old. It better not break down that early. Oh, his hard drive crashed and he's working on rebuilding it. Oh, that would explain where he's been then. The new troops, are they worth it? Uh, no, they're really bad. And Pure Faction is super ridiculously annoying. Which is a really weird combination. But that is the case. Where the troops are both simultaneously bad while also being the most annoying Pure Faction in the entire game. Sea of Sorrows was kind of the same way. Has one of the hardest pure factions in the game, but the troops are all bad. I know that almost makes no sense at all, but it's it's because you have to use the pure faction against the pure faction. So some team compositions are just hard to use against it, even if they're weak. And this is one of them, mostly due to transform mechanic. Oh, what path do we want? Does it even matter too much? <laughs> oh, that's the multiplier. Probably not. And the medal for the worst faction goes to the faction related to the second worst kingdom. Wait, which one's the second worst kingdom? Arshkane is not the second worst kingdom, if you're referring to this faction. I'm not sure where I would put it, but I wouldn't say it's worse. Yeah, we're doing Pure Faction probably tomorrow morning. There's no way we're getting into it today. Though then again, I say that. We might get pretty close since we have so many potion effects. Potions are really helping us speed through the battles. Yeah, I'm going to be using the Zugoth. Or that my plan was to use Zugoth team for higher level range. I might try Tina some because some people are suggesting it. I don't think I'm going to bother with Tesla just because I personally don't care for Tesla as much. And, um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure for the really high level range I will be running Zugoth for like 300 plus. Or at least 350 plus. We'll try Tina out soon though. Maybe once we hit about 200 we'll try Tina. I feel like 200 to 300 range is where Tina works best anyways. Because you should be able to double cast Tina to win. 
The only big issue with it is it's blocked on a lot of mana. But once this team stops one-shotting, or once this team stops uh, winning in two offensive casts, it'll not be worth it anymore. And I count Urskia's shield as an offensive cast in that situation. But basically, once we er once we use Urskia's shield into Rowane, and it doesn't kill, is when um, we'd probably want to switch our team. Currently, it's still getting the kill. Has Krag the Dread ever devoured you? Yes. It only devours you when it'll cause you to lose. <laughs> it knows exactly when you could potentially lose a battle and then decides to 5% devour you. That tends to be how Dr Krog the Dread works. But yeah, it's a really low percent, but it can happen. Okay, what's next? Final room. Should still be able to get one shot. I think we can still one shot up to about 160 or 170. But I say that, it actually looks a little low right now. Well, we'll see how close it's going to get. Get our splody splodies. Oh, I lied. We already can't. Okay, that's problematic. Okay, let's go try Tina team. <laughs> Okay, let's go try Tina. Do I still have it on copy paste? I might still have it on copy paste actually. Because the copy paste for the code was on the other computer. Uh let's see. Yep, there it is. Okay, let's give it a shot. Unfortunately, we do have mechanist max though. And this team does require mech. Oh, what traits are you running with it? I might want to modify it compared to what I normally run. Uh let's see. Random status effect, correct. Extra from shield. I believe all three of those don't matter. Uh, wait, what does mirror count as? Does mirror count as a shield? No, it counts as an artifact, which is none of those three. So it doesn't matter what we set. Um, barrier at start of battle. I guess that's fine. The other ones aren't really going to do much. Uh, extra on hit. I'd rather have extra magic. Wait, what does shield do? Never mind. So you don't need that. Um... Barrier when an ally dies or extra magic. I'll just give extra magic. Banish to dispel. Or we could enchant. I'm not sure if we'd really need to spell too much with this team. Compared to enchant for extra mana. And all mech allies gain extra armor per turn. I okay, got it. Should be fine. All right. Let's see what this can do. And banner set to plus two purple plus one red. That works for mirror. Let's give it a shot, see what happens. We'll try for one delve. So what's your damage right now? 116 to 232. So I should triple one shot into triple one shot. I should probably do Leprechaun first though. Ooh, whoops, mistakes were made. Should definitely Leprechaun first. Because we need to cast that at least twice unless we get random skull. So right off the bat, we'll do this. Then we Tina, then we Tina. There we go. Yeah, with all the extra potion effects, it should probably last to about 270. The only problem is we're not gaining class XP from this. Though we hit level 70, so our main goal is already reached. Plus, the deeper you go, the less effective using a random hero class will be anyways. You've had Glut Maul eat your entire team. Ouch. You can't get Iron Gut Devour at 60, but a Glut Maul with 5% can take out your entire team. Ouch. Yeah, I've actually never bought in a lottery ticket before. I've gotten lucky enough on some days that I probably should have. Ha! 
Hello, the White Tiger. Welcome. Tina Tina sounds like a song. Tina Tina. I'm going to take mana preemptively. Looks like we would even need after that skull, though. He once won a whole 10 dollars. I've never had anyone in my entire family win the lottery before. Or at least anything of a substantial value. I think they might have won several hundred before. But, uh, you know, they never, like, won one. I think the biggest thing anyone in my family ever won was a car. A relatively old car that was worth tens of thousands of dollars. I think it was anywhere from, like, 20,000 to 100,000. I think that's the biggest thing anyone in my family ever won. I forget how much money he put into it. It's probably several hundreds for to even attempt for it. If not more. Actually, he won it from the um, boardwalk, too. That one place where they are... Or one of those places that they used to um, uh, sh uh, record the Jersey Shore from. I forget what that place is actually normally called. I normally just always call it the boardwalk. It has a couple of names. <laughs> that area is called. But it was a really popular... Um, Kind of like beachfront boardwalk kind of place. Even popular, it was even popularized before that show. Though it's uh, not really much of a thing anymore. Because it's had been destroyed by two fires and a hurricane. Hurricane Sandy and two fires basically completely decimated the area. The boardwalk's still there, it's just not as popular as it's been in the past. Yeah, Wildwood Seaside Heights, that's the place. Wait, is it called Wildwood? Seaside Heights sounds correct. I'm pretty sure it's Seaside Heights. Wildwood does not sound correct. Oh, uh, let's see. Go take Explosion. Yeah, two times Tina with this many stats is pretty broken. I've never ran her with this many stats before. And it is definitely strong. We have 72 alpha potions, level 200 faction. Giving her all those stats. Also, I'm still running her with armor. I need to go switch to magic. Forgot to do that earlier. Oh, so I keep targeting the first slot, but I should actually be targeting the second slot. Because one of the things it gains is enchant. Oh, wait, never mind. We already have enchant. Never mind. I should be just targeting first slot then. Man, let me go change the magic. I forgot that. Armor does help because it increases its skull damage. But it has enough armor that that won't really matter much. Hello, Waikamura. Welcome. Hello, Rainbow Flyer. Oh, uh, what am I doing here? Uh, let me get a um, magic. There was something I came out here for. There we go. What's in our mail? Probably just a bunch of shards. Grab that, grab that. And head back to here. Okay, let's go get our explosion. Got our two pokes. Come on, hit high enough. There we go. Sometimes it gets so hollow it doesn't get the one shot. Or it hits so high that it gets the one shot when you're not expecting it. Once it can't kill in two casts anymore, it won't be worth using. And then we'll probably start using instant kill. Similar to how the whole roll lane premise. If it stops working in two casts, almost every single team in the game is like that. If you can't win in two casts of your damage source, then it's probably a slow method for whatever game mode you're doing. That's applicable to pretty much every game mode in the game, but the only exception being Explore, in which case in Explore, assuming you're doing lower level Explore, you want to win in one cast, not two. But um, generally speaking, you want to win every game you ever do. 
in two offensive casts or less if you're trying to quick kill it. And if your team can't currently do that, there might be a team that can. But generally, those are the main kind of teams you want to build for every game mode. Two offensive casts or less. Yeah, normally this works best from 200 to 300. This team that we're using right now. That's where I normally use Tina. But with all of our extra potions, it might go a little bit fur further, like 230, 240, 250, or 350, I mean. All those I meant with three, not two. But it should be able to go to about two, 350, I would say. Maybe a little bit less than that. And then we'll switch to Zook off for the rest of the time. Though that'll probably be tomorrow by that point. I don't think we're going to be getting that far today. As far as how far we get today, we're probably just going to stick with Tina the rest of the time. At this point. Plus because we don't really use her much these days. Oh, I could take a free skull and already won. Whoops. Not that big a deal though. What's well, a good substitute for the weapon? Uh, well, you get the weapon pretty easy. It's 250 wins off of... Um, off of... Uh, what's it called? Uh, Arc Magnus Hero Class, which is the new Hero Class that came into the game most recently. But if you don't have it... Um, a second Leprechaun would probably work. Though you wouldn't have 50% mech start at that point. Oh yeah, I heard someone mentioning that if they transform, you don't get uh, Deathless. Did we just get Deathless for this? Let me double check. We should be able to, even if they transform. Yeah, we still got the points for it. Maybe that was just a glitch when it first came out. But yeah, we just got the uh, Deathless points for it, even though he transformed. Yeah, they both say 160. Maybe it was a glitch when it first came out. It should have been the entire time, though. It shouldn't be a mechanic that makes it go and not do it. Uh, you'd rather use a weapon. You could do Mountain Crusher in first slot then. That's the closest thing that you can do to that. Is Mountain Crusher in first slot. And use something like Titan Hero Class with it. Or mech. You can still use mech. You want to get one barrier, starting barrier out of mech though. But you would use it for half mana start on your mechs of course. Which is pretty important to have. Because that's what allows Tina to go so quick. Because it basically makes her 10 mana cost troop. Or 12, I mean. Or technically 10. Actually, I was right the first time. Because enchant gives you 2. So on the first turn, you're only going to need to get 10 mana. Between enchant and... Um, and um, mech half mana start. Mana surge. And it was Tina twice. Also, I'm surprised I didn't bother doing any skips yet. I guess we have so much potion effect that we don't really need to yet. Once we start switching to Zugoth, I probably will. Also, I believe we're already at the point where we got enough Val Ravens to have enough sigils. Need to go double check. Pretty sure we already do. But I do want to make sure I have some spears because it's going to be really annoying to run Fear Faction tomorrow. So we're probably going to need more than one try. I highly doubt we'll get it first try. Uh, how many sigils do we still need? Actually, we have enough right now. So theoretically, we can start, start skipping all of them if we really want to. At this exact moment in time, we have enough sigils to make it all the way. Plus, we get another three tomorrow, which will be our spears that we need. So theoretically, we could get zero more Vow Ravens and have enough sigils for tomorrow to get it done. And still have extra attempts left over. Oh, I hate when I forget to do that. You should always wait till you get to full mana on both before you do that. Whoops. Not that big a deal, though. Waste like a turn or two. You don't get deathless if your troop transforms? Really? Well, why would you need to do that, though? 
Because you would never try doing Deathless and Pure Faction simultaneously. Though you should still... That shouldn't... That isn't supposed to count as a death. You transforming yourself. Only if the enemy transforms you. Should it count as a death? Oh, you know what? They tweaked it a little bio back so that death counter works a bit differently. And maybe when they did that, they ended up making it accidentally count as always counting as a death in that game mode. Because they made it so transforming the enemy wouldn't stack up deaths. But in making that change, they might have also changed it so you transforming yourself does count as a death. When they tweaked it a little while back. They did that several months ago. But this is the first time where it's really been applicable for delves. Yeah, it's supposed to work that way. If you transform, it shouldn't count as a death. But if the enemy transforms you, it does not count as deathless anymore. That's how it's supposed to work. Uh, blocking Tina's with Mountain Crusher isn't too big a deal. Because you end up feeding Brownstorm and you end up feeding them two mana every single time you cast uh, Mountain Crusher. Because Mountain Crusher gives two mana to all brown allies. So it's not that bad if you do block it. It is one of those kind of weapons where blocking mana doesn't actually really matter for the most part. There are definitely quite a few where it would matter. That's not one of them though. Just because of how it feeds mana to everything else. Also, can we please just get a skull? That's all we need to win this. It'd be too annoying to try to get full mana. Where even is our move? Uh, really? Oh, there we go. Well, we got full mana. Took like six turns longer than it needed to, though. You need to finish the delve with four troops uh, you start with. So you need to transform back to your original troops. Oh yeah, Deathless might actually count that way, doesn't it? I didn't think of it like that. Because Deathless probably... No, actually... I don't know. Is that the case? Because I believe... Um, I'm pretty sure I've used Transform before on something and still gotten the points even when it didn't finish as the final thing. I'm trying to think of what instance I end up doing that for. I think we used Werewolf once, for one. And he uh, finished his Villager... Instead of Werewolf, and I believe we still got the points. That was a while back. And they did make a tweak to how Transforms work about five months ago or so. I don't think it was ever mentioned in patch notes, but it was a tweak to it. Uh, good night, Starlight. Catch you later. You reached 400. Nice. But no skips? Yeah, 400 with no skips is actually a really nice amount of progress. With skips, this devil could probably take like two hours <laughs> to complete it out, so it doesn't take too, too long. But it takes quite a bit longer if you don't skip at all. Another Vow Raven. Nice little skull there. Actually, no skips probably three hours to get that far, actually, now that I think about it. I don't know. Maybe it would be close to two hours. Because we've been going for about two hours, and we're at uh, no skip. And if we count our other three battles, we'd be at, like, a little over 200 right now. With two hours, no skip. Because, yeah, we'd be at 200 or above right now if we didn't do the other three battles. If I did those just to get a higher amount of resources off of them. When we did those for two times multiplier. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. We get that for now. Yeah, that sounds about right. Or in in. I feel tempted to start skipping though, because we're going to not really use all of our extra sigils anyways. And we already have to do half the delve anyways, even with no skip. So after this delve, I think we actually are going to start skipping. And just always take, um, I guess, top path, since it's slightly quicker than bottom path, due to not having a tier 5 room. Because we already have more than enough sigils to go all the way right now. And while we do sacrifice a small amount of loot, I think it's still worth it. But I think my goal for now is to get to about 250 to stream. Then probably aim for 300 tonight. And then we go all the way to 500 and pure faction tomorrow. But yeah, let's start doing skip method, I guess. We'll take top half every time. Done with pure faction 200, transformed a lot. And it did give you credit for uh, deathless. There's the answer to your question. Okay. So it does still work then. This is basically the bottom line. So it hasn't changed the mechanic for it. Which is good to know. Alright, okay, uh, let's go to take the rush path to, um, to ends. Which rush path is still half the dough, but oh well. Still quicker than doing all of it. Oh, does that mirror give one uh, mana to all allies? It's kind of funny and somewhat useful in this particular instance, if it does. It looked like it did there. Maybe I just was confusing it with enchant, but I'm pretty sure it just did. Um, you give one mana to all allies, right? Come on, cycle through. Yep, one mana to all allies. I wasn't going crazy, it does. Definitely looked like it did. And it does. Please click. There we go. If only we could get Skull. Oh, well, that works too. Hello, Luller, the goats. You destroyed you in war. Nice. Uh, you're from uh, the two Pado de uh, Lupi, too. Uh, it was uh, easy to defeat your team, was it? What team am I using right now? Guild, Guild Wars. I am currently using... Is it? It's 5-10 right now. It has the highest win rate of any team we've used this entire week. But yeah, it's Amira, Life and Death, Arachnid Weaver, and King Avalon. Statistically, it should be the hardest one to defeat. But um, I wasn't able to defeat it with my own too, so <laughs> I guess it can be easily defeated technically. But um, it's pretty standard Life and Death team, just with a slight tweak. Mostly the Amira thing. But it has the highest win rate of the week so far. Having a 33% win rate. Which for Guild Wars definitely is not that bad at all. Anyways, uh, let's go back to faction. Clear to rest this one out. Oh, uh, let's see. We'll go for this for now. Well, Deathless in the past has always been... Transforming doesn't matter at all. Is how Deathless used to be. I'm not sure if it's still like that now, though. But in the past, it was... If you transform yourself, it does not matter what you transform into. 
it just matters that the enemy doesn't transform you. If the enemy transforms you, it would count as not deathless. But if you transformed yourself, it would count as deathless. And that's how it was in the past. As long as you're the one specifically doing the transforming, it still maintains deathless. And I'm pretty sure that's still the case now. But if the enemy even does it to you once, it counts as uh, a death. It doesn't count as death for boost ratio anymore. Because they ended up patching that out uh, several months ago. However, it does count as a death for pure uh, deathless. Because counting as a death for boost ratio and counting for a death for deathless are two completely different things. Which is a little, little bit confusing part of it. Because natural death and deathless are not the same. Uh, what team did you run through the whole thing? Might as well ask. I'm curious. We ended up switching to Tina's because why not? I'm going to be running Zuga for later teams though. And I end up running Rowan for the lower end. Once we get a little bit further, I am probably going to switch out of Tina to Zuga. Probably around 250 actually, I feel like. I'm just running it for the later half. With instant kills, bam. This team still seems to be in double hit range for most of them, though. Was this final battle that makes it seem like it's out of damage already? Also, it's 100 to 200 where this works best, by the way. I'm not sure why I was saying 200 to 300 earlier. But it's 100 to 200 where it works best. Though it can go a little bit further depending on potions. There we go. I already got a double hit. Oh, you need to translate the troops to English because you play in Italian. Yeah, I would not understand what they are in Italian, unfortunately. Uh, do you know how many players there are currently playing Gems of War? Uh, a lot. Um, the number is probably around concurrent or total accounts. Um... Concurrent players at any given time across every single platform is probably around 5,000 to 10,000 at any given time. Particularly at peak hours like right now. Like Steam alone, if we go check it, it should be about 1,500 to 2,000 if I'm not mistaken. Actually, we can easily check what it is. Go to Steam charts. We can only check Steam pretty easily though. I don't think we can easily check the other places, uh, locations. Uh, wait, what is it called Steam charts? Uh, there it is. Yep. Gems of War. How many players are currently playing? This is only like a fourth to a fifth of how many people are actually playing, though. Uh, and it's currently at uh, 22,008. Or sorry, uh, 2,208, I meant to say. Is how many people are currently playing at this exact moment in time right now on Steam. Um, but that's not every single platform. That is just Steam. That does not count mobile. That does not count... Um, any of the console versions. So I would say it's generally around about 10,000. Because we know that mobile has more than Steam. And then you also add the consoles on top of that. So I'd say 10,000 concurrent players right now is about correct. But keep in mind there are more players than that actually playing the game. It's just how much you're playing at any given time is about 10,000. A little bit less depending on time of the day. Because right now is peak hours at the moment. As far as overall player base that actually plays the game, 
based on if you're like really low on PvP leaderboard, I would say it's somewhere around 100 to 200,000 players. How many people actively played a game? Not total accounts, but how many people actively played a game? Is around 100 to 200,000 per week or so. With about 10,000 concurrent as the average or so. And that's counting every platform. Are the leak tables global? Um, no. Uh, PC Mobile shares the same global leaderboards, and then every console has a separate one. PS4 has its own, Xbox One has its own, and Switch has its own. The only one that's cross platforms PC Mobile. Every other version's independent. Yeah, this game has a pretty big player base for how little they advertise. And by how little they advertise, I mean, like, literally not at all. It also has steadily grown the entire duration of its existence. It has grown in population every year. There's not been a single year where the overall population of the game has gone down yet. It's been going for five years, which is pretty rare for a game to have five years of growth in a row. Yeah, all you do is get to the minimum of rank 1 PvP and you're already rank 38,000, yeah. And generally there's about 50 or 60,000, I believe, on PC Mobile that show up on the PvP. So we can already kind of just assume there's about that many players on PC Plus Mobile. It's normally around like 60, 70,000 per week, approximately. But yeah, if I go check that right now too, I'm probably like rank 40,000. Yet we already have some amount. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm currently ranked 47,511, and it's not even like we're at zero, which would bring that number even higher. Uh, or, you know, not literally zero, but, you know, if it was like 600 or 700, that number would be way higher. But, um, yeah, even where we currently are right now, it's showing that we're <laughs> basically 50,000, which means there's at minimum PC Mobile 50,000 player. It's way higher than that, though. Or not way, way higher. It's like 60 or 70,000 or so. And that's just people who play at least like one PvP battle. There could be some people that just do a bunch of treasure hunt or something. Or just decide not to play on a given week. Because not everyone's always active. Can you describe the method by which the game gets uh, in your uh, bloodstream and has you craving for it nightly? I feel like most free-to-play games are set up that way. To basically set it up as a habit until you make it into a hobby. And then once it becomes a hobby, people become more inclined to actually spend money towards it. So Gems of War has a pretty good model that you don't technically ever need to spend money on it to do good progression. Early game might be a little bit more annoying if you don't spend any money to get like Death Knight or something. But uh, once you reach later in the game, the uh, game is really forgiving for uh, free to play. Like you can easily progress through the game with no limitations, 100% free to play once you reach a certain point. And technically even early game can be too, it's just a little bit grindy for some people's tastes doing free-to-play in the early part of Gems of War. Have I read the team above? Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you posted it. My bad. Uh, Far Stroll, Apothecary, King, uh, Gob Truffle, and Skady. Um, yeah, it would work out pretty decently. Uh, I'm not sure about the Skady with it, though. I'd honestly, in most situations, just prefer having a double truffle. Wait, what's that team used for, though? Because you can't run it for this delve, because you can't run Far Stroll here. Not sure what you were mentioning that team for. Is it pure blue? It looks like a pure blue team. It kind of looks like a pure blue. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're using that for. But it's it does look like it would work. If that's your blue Guild War team. Keep in mind, you are allowed to double up on um, offensive Guild Wars. You're not allowed to defensively. 
But offensively, you get no penalty for using two, three, or four of the exact same troop. Obviously, you wouldn't want to use three or four, but um, you, you are allowed to use two and not get any penalty. So things like Double Truffle can be used offensively on both blue and green Gilward Day, with blue being the better day since you can run Forest Troll into Double Truffle. And then just put one supporting troop behind it, like Hero with something or Skady or whatever else you want to run. I sure how I feel about Skady, though. Um, Skady's not, like, horrifically bad, but it's it's just really clunky when you can actually use it. I wish it had a better offensive ability. It doesn't even have four times mana burn. Like, even Queen Mab has a better offensive ability than it, which just seems kind of weird. The thing that it summons has a better cast than itself. Yeah, Skate is mostly overused for its storm. More often than not. Like if you're putting Skate in your team, you're almost exclusively using it for perpetual blue storm. Which makes sense for a pure blue team, of course. It's pretty much the only times you ever actually do break Skate out, is of course for pure blue. Also helps counter if they have anti storms. Okay, that'll be enough to double cast and hopefully it hits high enough numbers. And as I say that it hits like the lowest possible numbers, gosh. No, at least hit the same three twice. That works. And then we just one-shot Skull. Or get full mana, either or. Mana, there we go. Or one-shot Skull. Back to the first plan. And dead. There we go. 230 done. And I think at 250 we'll finally go and change out this team. Because then we'll stop killing all these other battles. It's already not killing last battle. But uh, soon it'll stop killing these earlier battles as well. In two hits. And once it stops doing that, we definitely need to switch out of it. Will I be using my team for Blue Guild War? Um, I'm actually going to be running... Um, uh, what's it called for Blue Guild War today? Mostly just to test how it, see it works. Because we never really got to test it much last time. We tested it once, but I still want to try it again. Um, uh, what's your name? Um, Vespera. I wanted to try Vespera for both Blue and Purple Day to see how viable she is as a Guild War Mythic. We've only been able to test her once, and I want a little bit more data on it, as testing her for one Guild War day isn't that good of an uh, example of her. But yeah, for today and tomorrow, I'm running uh, uh, I'm running a, um, a Vespera team, just to get a grasp of how viable she actually is for Guild War now, now that she can be used for Purple Day as well. I test her again for Blue and testing her for the first time for Purple. And the reason it's the first time for purple is we can now use it with Arc Magnus here class. Oh, we don't currently have that set. But um, we finally got to level 70, so we'll be able to use it for that purpose. Uh, what's the best pure faction team? The Exploder into three of the uh, Legends. It's the green, purple, 13 mana cost Exploder. I forget its name. Into three of the Legends is what you run for pure faction for this faction. And he's dead. I kind of feel tempted to take that skull. Oh wow, really nice. And that is why. Come on, get full man already. Or at least a skull. Either or. We'll do it. And he's dead. Why is our points lower? Um, we're mi We were missing a few people. So it could just be that we don't have our battles in. Because I forget if it does 27 out of 30 at the end of the thing cycle or not. Um, but I believe our points look so low. Because I don't think it incorporates 27 out of 30 yet. Also, we haven't done most of our battles today might also be contributing to it but it says 150 however we were missing two or three people this week and i'm pretty sure 27 out of 30 doesn't take effect until the very end and for that reason i believe we're actually higher than we currently are now we have a lot of battles we haven't done yet 
But yeah, I don't. I believe for every single day, it still takes the full 150. But at the end, it takes the 27 out of 30. Once you finally have all your battles in. Or, you know, once the, uh, the event weekends. I'm pretty sure that's when it takes place. I'm actually not 100% sure how the 27 out of 30 new mechanic, this patch, actually takes effect. Because it's a relatively new thing. I believe this is the second Guild Wars we've ever had it for, actually. This is probably the last stealth I'm running uh, this team for until we switch over to Zugov. Which means we'll run the whole um, the whole gambit of... Uh, or what's the range I'm looking for? I'm looking for uh, a specific word. Like the full range of teams for um, the whole variety? I'm not sure. There's a specific word for it that I'm looking for. But um, yeah, we would have ran every single type of team that we could have ran for this after we did the Zugov one. Well, except for Pure Faction. But obviously we can't do that till 500. Hey, you took a screenshot of defeating my team. Nice. Congrats. Is one year a thing? I'm not sure what you mean by that. I'm not sure why I said Gambit. I'm, I'm like trying to figure out a, a word that means like the full range of something. I know there's a word for that. Sounds nice. I forget it off the top of my head. Uh, let's see, we'll take that for now. Grab a uh, green to red. And he's dead. Get our splody splodies. Full spectrum. Yeah, basically a word that means that. In a single word. I know there is one. I just forgot what it was off the top of my head. Still can't think of it. It's not that important. <laughs> uh, let's see. Get a Tina down. I do need to get to writing more often. My vocabulary is suffering from it. Because the way I speak is in a way lower vocabulary than how I normally write. Okay, I think we're going to finally switch over to, um, to Zugoff now. Okay, so for that, uh, I actually already have the team saved. So let me go and grab it real quick. Because I showed it for the video. Uh, it was this team. It is uh, Titan Hero class with Mountain Crusher, uh, Zugoff, Leprechaun, and um, Ubistet. That's what we're running for. Uh, manage, paste team, and there we go. Okay, let's go test this. You could probably tweak around the banner. I just started with brown, red. We might change it. Might keep it the same. Not sure. But currently we have plus one brown, red, and green. The green being off of, um, off of uh, Leprechaun. Okay, and now he's instant kill to instant kill, pretty much. Hopefully it was just enough to kill that. I feel like it isn't because there's so few things. So we'll take a poke and then kill it. But we could also just look at the card to see what his boost ratio is. Ideally, the premise of using this team is Zugoff into... Um, Ubistet. And then we just won. Oh, we can't instant Ubistet. I was hoping that he'd have enough attack that that's a thing. Ever since they tweaked his boost ratio, that's no longer a thing. He at one point used to be able to do that. Not anymore, though. Oh, that getting that kill there actually made it so I couldn't kill. As weird as that may seem. Because Ubistet needs the weaker one alive in order to get the double kill. 
The whole gamut? Yeah, that's probably the phrase I was looking for. Uh, let's see. Grab that. Grab mountain. Get an Ubistet. Or not Ubistet. Get a Zukov, I mean. Kill the most annoying thing. Ubistet double kill. And it was need Zukov again. There we go. I'm not sure it is actually quicker than Tina right now. When will I be doing Guild Wars? I do it on the nightly streams. I always do the um, guild related event on nightly stream. They will be doing it about uh, six and a half hours from now. Or sorry, five and a half hours from now. And the rest of the stream we're just going to be doing uh, faction. As well as most of the rest of the stream tonight as well. Because we'll just do Guild Wars and then pretty much get right back into doing factions. Since, of course, that's the main goal of this weekend is to go get this event done. Really, you're going to be one mana short. So I can't get the kill. It's going to make me waste a whole turn. Yeah, Gambit was the word I was looking for. Which is why I said Gambit. <laughs> Wrong word. Sounds similar, though. Yeah, that's definitely what I was looking for. Thank you, Polly. Uh, are there any other teams? Um, yes, you can run Rowane with Urskia Shield. Uh, is probably your best bet. We were running that initially. However, you can run it through the entirety of the Delve if you want to. It's um, Urskia Shield, Rowan, Leprechaun, and either a second Leprechaun or another Utility Troop. Depends on what you have. I think you can use Possess King there if you want to, or another damage, but um, um, this, the second Leprechaun would be the cheapest thing to put there. And you basically just use Urskia Shield into Rowan several times until Rowan can one-shot the entire enemy team. And rinse and repeat that per battle. I started with that team. But then we switch over to instant kills. Well, we switched a couple times. We've ran like four different teams so far throughout it all. And another one once we reach pure faction. Yeah, Urskia Shield with two times Tesla. A lot of people like that team too. I'm personally not a fan of Tesla though in that kind of team. Oh, and I felt like I used Tesla a lot when she first came out, and I used her so much that I just kind of got tired of her. Which is kind of weird, because it plays somewhat similarly to Rowane. Yeah, I actually prefer Rowane over Tesla. However, they gain about the same amount of benefit from Ariskea Shield. And by about the same amount of benefit, I mean literally the same amount of benefit. They both gain uh, an overall two times boost ratio. Theoretically, Tesla is a, a 1.2, as in it gains one fourth the effectiveness. However, uh, you gain armor to four things, so it still does the full effect. Assuming you have a full team, which generally if you're doing delves is the case. Yeah, pure faction in this uh, delve is the most annoying pure faction in the entire game due to transform. I am not looking forward to it. We'll probably be doing it tomorrow night or later part of tomorrow stream or both. I'm probably going to do some amount of it later part of tomorrow stream in the morning stream. However, or I should say afternoon stream. But um, I'm not sure if we're actually going to be able to get it completed before uh, the nightly stream. 
Because it's going to be so time consuming to do Pure Faction. Particularly Pure Faction 500. And I expect it to take multiple attempts. Because it really comes down to luck what team you have for the final battle. If you even have all four of them alive by then. Which honestly, I feel like keeping all four of them alive should be pretty easy. It's just um, doing the actual final battle is what's going to be difficult. But I'm not really too concerned with getting four of them the final battle. I'm more so concerned with what on earth my team would be by the time we have four of them in the final battle. Might even just need to keep transforming my troops prior to the battle before. Until we have an optimal team for the final battle. Might be the strategy to actually use for it. Which would be pretty time consuming to do. But, um, and it might not even be possible since we might accidentally win by killing out the enemy. But it's worth considering. At least trying to convert a few of them to be correct, if nothing else. Hello, Falnix. Uh, welcome. You're early mid-game and uh, was wondering uh, which class weapons uh, were worth it. You only have the Titan one and the uh, Essence of Evil and the Skeleton Key. Um, you can also get Urskia Shield off of Sentinel Hero Class, which is from the Urskia Kingdom. Uh, you can also get um, uh, the most recent added one, the Arc Magnus from, what was it, Silverglade Hero Class, I believe it is, which ends up giving you the Mirror of Reflection, uh, which is basically like Essence of Evil, but positive instead of negative. Uh, what other ones are good? Uh, Life and Death is not from Hero. Life and Death is from um, Silver Necropolis, or Necropolis. Um... Trying to think of whatever other ones are from Hero specifically. We had Skeleton Key, Essence of Evil, uh, Mirror of Good, uh, Arskea Shield. And I feel like for the most part, that's most of them. I think there might be a few other ones you use ever so occasionally. But those are like the main core ones, unless I'm forgetting one or two. Uh, I'll throw that down. Which is probably Ubistet range. Yes, it is. Okay, I gotta make sure Hero doesn't die. This is actually possible in these battles. We are getting deep enough where Hero can die. And we do want to avoid that, of course. And he's dead off Zugo. Okay, next one. Uh, yeah, we'll stick to Rush Path. So what are we on right now? 270 or 280? We're on 280. I guess we'll go to 300 then. For now. And then we can probably get to 350 tonight or so. And then finish the last little set for tomorrow. And then the later part of tomorrow morning stream, we'll go and test uh, Pure Faction. And if we don't get it done in the morning, we'll get it done tomorrow night. We'll definitely get it done by the end of Saturday, that's for sure. Did it really just live with 2 HP? Nothing else I guess that gives us Ubus that setup, but still. Yep, no problem. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Okay, what do we have here? Let's go get uh, Splody Splodies. Uh, yeah, we'll take that for now. Actually, I probably should take him away to transforming troop. If that kills us, we do count as a death. Plus, it'd be annoying to win. That should be full mana. Well, it's almost one mana short. That would have been horrible. And there we go. Okay. Ah, uh, explode again. Get a mountain. Uh, I'm actually going to kill Valkyrie just because it's full mana. More so than any other reason. Pretty much just because it's full mana. And then we have Ubisoft set up as long as we don't accidentally get a skull. Which would be the worst time to get a skull. I always hate that. 
Like, you never get the skull when you want, but when you actually need to not take a skull, you're just gonna accidentally get a skull. Luckily, that time it didn't happen. But it definitely feels like it happens a lot. Do you really think that uh, this stove is harder than Sea of Sorrows? I'm not sure. I haven't actually tried Sea of Sorrows. Sea of Sorrows is pretty hard. However, Sea of Sorrows can be done with higher stats. Whereas this one... Well, I guess theoretically this one can be done with higher stats too. I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's on par with how hard Sea of Sorrows is. I haven't actually tried Sea of Sorrows yet, so I can't actually definitively say once we have done it. But out of every delve I've ever done, this is definitely the hardest, for sure, for Pure Faction. But yeah, Sea of Sorrows, the reason Sea of Sorrows is so hard is it has true damage. Like, so much true damage that it could one-shot you. And you need to have enough stats so it won't one-shot you. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> because it has, like, a 15 mana cost thing that can one-shot you pretty easily. In almost every situation. Oh, we got skulls I didn't want, but oh well. We got enough mana from it to get a zoog off, so it works. How old am I? I am 25. Uh, let's see. Grab our explosion. Also, I didn't even look at the number yet. But if we look at any of these troops, we should see a shiny 72 right here. I think that's the highest we've ever had. Or, sorry, 63. Hold up. Oh, yeah, I bought nine times. Yeah, duh, it's 63. Why did I think it was 72 earlier? If we bought one more pack, it wouldn't even be 72. Or, yes, it would. Never mind. Oh, wait, no, it wouldn't. Math. <laughs> um, oh, I know why. Because I'm calculating it out as if it's nine per potion. It's seven per potion. That's why the number looked weird. Okay, now he's needs Zugoff man and we win. We'll do Mountain, we'll do Leprechaun, we'll do Mountain and then dead. Off of Zugoff. Then Leprechaun. Then Mountain. Then dead. What was my favorite subject at school? Probably math. Absolutely love math. It's probably why I like games so much. Big fan of very quick math. I don't like higher level math though, like algebra and stuff. But as far as like the basic to mid range math, I like a lot. The stuff that's actually more practical on a day to day basis. Oh, what I grab here? Let's get our explosions. I right, I don't need theirs. So let's get that for now. I'm doing that on that just so it doesn't get transformed. I was hoping that would also bring it to Ubistat ranges. Not. However, I'm going to take that skull so it is. And then we just have to feed the mana. I'm going to do this first just because the Mountain Crusher is being frozen. That should be full mana, and then he dies. Actually, we can even kill it with a skull, but that works too. He just hit level 500 and playing since uh, last November. Uh, you consider yourself a mid-gamer. Uh, part of your progress, progress because of you and uh, other tips. Oh, yeah, no problem. If you still have any other uh, questions, Andrew, uh, I'd love to answer any of them. If you have anything you want me to go over. But around that level range, your main focus should probably be getting every single kingdom to level 10 if you haven't already. So you're using gold to get every single one to level 10. This ends up giving a bonus stat and will add to a lot of extra stats um, that you'll be able to utilize, which will make quite a bit of content easier in the game. And from there, you probably want to focus on getting five star all kingdoms. Start getting them all to one star first if you haven't already done all the quest lines. And then start working one at a time up to five stars. Event keys can help quite a bit on that too. Since whatever one uh, is available in event keys can pretty easily be maxed. Also, if the kingdom has a delve, it's also a lot easier to max because it just naturally has a lot more troops since you can get half of them from the delve. Or not half of them, but four of them, I should say. Which is a pretty decent handful. Very Raven. 
not like we need more Val Ravens. At this point, that's just backup in case we really mess up on the uh, final battles. That or if we want to Reapic spam the final battles. I don't think we're going to need to, but it is a possibility if we really wanted to. Reapic spam it. I don't think I'm going to, though. Because with how many rooms we have to do, it almost won't even matter if we Reapic spam. Also, the most annoying room is going to be the final room. And all the rooms going up, leading up to it are going to be annoying regardless. Because just trying to kill them out will be annoying. Due to the fact that we can change our team the entire time. So any amount of battles prior, regardless of what they are, is going to be annoying. And none will really be much easier than others. Especially since the top half has no tier 5. So we don't need to worry about skull spam as much. I don't think anything other than tier 5 has really annoying skull spam. That were the final battle. But still, um, the only thing we have to worry about on skull spam is um, Beastmaster. And we can hopefully use our Beastmaster to counter their Beastmaster in that kind of situation. As long as we get our cast first. Which should be able to do with potion effects and everything. Because we can start with 20% mana and we'll start with enchant. So if we don't outpace his Beastmaster, there's a problem. Because we have all the advantage to do so. Oh, uh, we'll take care. We'll take that for now. Uh, Ubis, that's not in kill range of anything. So we'll take that for now. I almost feel like taking Skull just to bring it to kill range. But we can also do this. And then he's dead. Because we can use Zugoth's Skulls to bring them into Ubis that range. And then just double kill off of Ubis that. And do it that way. Okay, there we go. And we'll do one last though for now. I think this will be the last one. For uh, this morning stream. That's assuming you have a Beastmaster. Yeah, you could get unlucky and not get him. And you kind of need three of them to be running it for pure faction. And generally, ideally, you'd want to get it Mythic. So theoretically, you would actually need eight of him for a pure faction. Because you'd want to make sure all the troops are Mythic, ideally. You don't have to, to run pure faction. But it would definitely be beneficial, obviously, for them to be Mythic compared to not Mythic. And to do that, you would need about 8,000 or so shards or so. Give or take a little bit, depending on luck. Yeah, I know I shouldn't say morning. It's more like afternoon. And for time zone, some time zones, it's night. It's uh, 3 p.m. for my time zone right now. Or should I say 2.51. Oh, yeah. Arcane Trait Stones can block you a lot. Um, Explorer is where you would focus down um, Arcane Trait Stones. However, another th way to get uh, stocked up on them is every single week in the Glory Shop. There is a Arcane Trait Stone that you'll be able to buy for Glory. Uh, this is extremely valuable to do so. And how you end up accumulating a good majority of your early game Arcane Trait Stones is by buying them through the weekly Glory Troop. Uh, these you can get uh, Arcane Trait Stones for only 200 to 300 Glory each. If it's an Epic Troop, you'll, the pack will cost 400 and you'll get two Arcanes, meaning that they're only 200 each. The cheapest they ever are. And if they are um, a uh, any other rarity... They will end up costing 300 glory for the pack and give you one arcane trait stone. And those tend to be the best way to stock up on them. You also get a few other loots as well, which are all decent. But the arcane trait stone is the main reason you do them for earlier in the game. Prior to having all the arcanes you ever need. And if you ever need to focus down any specifically, yes, the best way to do that is by doing uh, explore. Explore has the best rate for trait stones in the game, especially with how easily you can focus them down. Because if you need something like a red-brown, for example, you can just go to Arskea. Or if you need a green-purple, you can go to something like uh, Zolkiri and just do that per trait stone. And if you're not sure where one is, you can check it in the uh, menu. The um, the menu that has all the trait stones, if you click on any of them, it shows you all the kingdoms that they reside in. We'll go show that in a second. It's not really that obvious that you can click on them. It's a feature they added about a year and a half. And it was a really nice quality of life feature that came out of nowhere. But um, let me take that tribute. Tributes, give us those gems, 10 gems. Not the best, not the worst. What was I looking for? Oh yeah, if you go under top left, click on hero menu, click on inventory, and go down to the trade stone section. If you click on any of these trade stones, it shows every single place where you can farm them. And if you click on it, it brings you there. And I always go to explore, and then you just keep grinding it over and over again with quick kill teams, and just farm the trade stones. Also, trade stones, unlike um, the um, metals or the tokens, uh, do not actually increase in rarity, uh, depending on your difficulty. So if you do it on difficulty 1, 2, or 3, 
you'll still be getting the same trait stone rate as if you were to be doing at a higher level. So if you're farming trait stone specifically, it's better to actually do it at a very low level rather than a higher one. Let's grab all that loot. Oh yeah, don't we gain an extra stat this week too? Uh, yes, we do. We gain plus one permanent armor once we go a few more delves. Very nice. We'll have that tonight then. They have permanent plus one armor in uh, in 60 more points. <laughs> so basically two more delve completions. So that means our first delve that we complete tonight will give us a permanent plus one armor forever. Which will help our Rowane do two more damage if nothing else. Then if we ever see ourselves survive with one HP, it's because of our one armor. Oh, what do I grab here? I'll take that for now. Get a right over there. Grab a right over there. Dugoff. And then hopefully you'll be set range. Kill. Oh, I did not want to kill that. Too much damage. Okay, looks like we'll have to do it with Zugoff then. Not too big a deal. As long as he gets full mana and dead. There we go. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do one more delve. Let's just get the one armor now. Mostly because it's a Guild War day. And I might as well have the extra armor to help us survive. Who knows? Maybe it'll help our Guild War team win. Having one whole additional armor. You never know. That can be a thing. Oh, what do I even grab here? I'll take the purple for now. Grab the brown over there into the reds. Get a mountain. And he's dead off as you go. If I can click correctly. I forgot to mention the glory troop thing. I meant to go mention it. But if you go into shop underneath glory, I'm pretty sure you're already aware of this. But you can get, um, well, for long, we'll grab this real quick. This is for our spoilers. For some event keys. Uh, you can buy 10 of those per week. But, um... The uh, Glory Troop, whatever's available here, comes with Arcanes. And any week like this week, which I highly advise stocking up on, is an Epic. And you can get Arcane Trait Stones for only 200 Glory each. Because it costs 400 for the pack, but you're getting two Arcanes. So it's really good to stock up on Arcanes. Maybe not that many, but uh, uh, if you uh, want to go stock up on a bunch of uh, Arcane Venoms, which are actually pretty good. Uh, all, all, every single, or most of the Empower Troops in the game are underneath Green Purple. And if I'm not mistaken, every single Green Purple Empower is actually a viable troop. So for a relatively small amount of glory, you can get pretty much infinite uh, of a trait stone. And it's even easier to do whenever an epic is here. Because they cost 200 each rather than uh, 100 each. I mean, uh, sorry. They cost 200 each rather than 300 each. So they're 100 glory cheaper per arcane than they normally are whenever it's an epic troop here. So definitely worth considering. Plus green purple is actually one of the better arcanes to have a lot of. Just because of how many things actually viably use the uh, trait stone. But anyways, I guess we'll complete the rule of Mardelve. I said 300, but uh, I uh, we actually gain a uh, whole extra armor from going to 310. So let's go to 310. Because if I'm not mistaken, we should be 30 points short of uh, an extra armor. So we'll have exactly 40,000 for plus one permanent armor once we get those points. So let's go do that now. Uh, do you have any team with Yasmin's Chosen for the events? Uh, I wouldn't really advise it. Well, which event do you mean? Um, Yasmin's Chosen is... A little underwhelming. Um, it's kind of like Web Spinner. But the biggest issue with it is that it's such a higher uh, mana cost. And also compared to Web Spinner, it doesn't have that triple damage thing on it either. But uh, I don't know. I wouldn't really advise using it much in the current state of the game. Wild Queen and Web Spinner are both stronger than it. Depending on the situation that you're looking for. And sometimes you even use them both together. But yeah, she's a little bit dated. I believe she was one of the first dozen uh, mythics added to the game, if I'm not mistaken. And a lot of the first dozen, with the only exception being maybe Fair Shra and one other one, uh, are a bit dated in the current state of the game. Even Fair Shra, from a damage perspective, is dated. The only thing that makes it relevant still is, of course, 150% soul gain is still always going to be relevant. It's never not going to be relevant. Unless they somehow add in a higher one, which will never happen.
Oh good, it didn't die. That would have been really annoying if it died there. Not perfect range for Ubis that. For an easy kill. Oh, the one I'm doing for the underground one right now. Um, you can build it with Leprechaun and Web Spinner. And do something like, um... Or even with Mirage... Uh, not Mirage Queen, with uh, Truffle. You can end up using it with Truffle. And build something like Hero in first slot with maybe Mountain Crusher. Followed by Truffle. Uh, King Gob Truffle, that is. Followed by Yasmin Chosen. Followed by a Leprechaun. And maybe run it somewhat like that. Or even maybe run the Leprechaun in front of it. You'd have to kind of mess around with it a little, little bit. See which way you prefer it. But something along the lines of that could work. Not sure how far that would really get you, though. Because she doesn't upscale for factions. So she probably doesn't go much further than 200. If she even makes it that far. Two more battles. And then we'll easily get to 350 plus tonight. We're also doing Guild Wars. And it is blue Guild War Day. <laughs> Had to double check. I always try to match up the shirt. I don't for yellow, brown, and green day though. But for the other three days I try to. The reason for yellow, brown, and green is every yellow and brown and green shirt I have ends up getting green screened. With how I have my green screen setting set right now. But the other ones don't get green screens. Okay, final battle. Or at least for now. Or for now, at least. We still have a ways to go, obviously. Still gotta go all the way to 500. Then the actual hard part of Pure Faction. Again, the 500 is not gonna be hard at all. Pure Faction will be, though. Well, it can be difficult still for, um, obviously, earlier on in the game and mid-game to actually reach that far. But, you know, once you have everything in the game, it's pretty easy to uh, get all the way. Once you have some of the better upscaling web methods. Things like Iron Guts, Zugoff, um, well, those are the main two. But, um, uh, even something like, um, but even earlier in the game, you still have options like, um, Urskia Shields of Rowan and things like that. Like, really cheap options that can still upscale. That you can get relatively easily. Oh, we actually got a death. <gasps> no! <laughs> that death actually matters. Because now we're 10 points short. <laughs> Rip! Oh no, we gotta go a whole nother delve now. Fine, we'll go another delve. Rip. We're gonna win this. But, um, we're gonna be 10 points short now. That is very unlucky. But that death actually makes it so we're the smallest amount of points possible short. Of uh, getting that. Because now we only get 20 points rather than 30. And now we are at uh, <laughs> 39,990. Really? I, I want to screenshot this just for fun. Really though? <laughs> we are 10 points short. What a fail. Okay, well, let's do another one. We would have gotten those 10 points if we didn't die there. But I wasn't paying attention and just randomly got a kill. So one more faction. <laughs> yep, now we got to go do 320. Now it doesn't matter if we accidentally die. Because we're going to get 20 points regardless, even if we die once. But uh, let's ideally not die. Technically, it only matters if we don't die on 500. Every other one technically doesn't matter. However, that one theoretically did matter because it cost us... Uh, or because we wouldn't, it would have made us so we didn't get the, um, the uh, armor. Which is what just happened. Uh, what team below did you just mention? Mountain Crusher, Gob Truffle, Yasmin's Chosen Leprechaun? Yes, that would work. Yeah, that, you'd be able to use that for it. And just run that with something like Titan Hero Class. But if anyone else has any other questions, let me know. Because this will be the last build we do for now. And then we get our plus one armor off of it. And show our stats so we can actually show the plus one armor in action. <laughs> Just to see it actually tick upwards. Uh, let's see, we'll take that. Let's take another skull so we can Ubisoft it and he's dead. Which 
should be enough damage. How many potions we have? He actually has a pretty high base damage. His base damage is already 124, which isn't that bad at all. Actually, it's probably a little bit lower than that. Probably closer to 120. But, of course, he gains magic every time he takes uh, extra turn. All Rashkas do, but he's the only one on our team. As he normally would be. As very few Rashkas are actually viable. But there are some. Him being one of them. I keep saying Rashkas. It's actually Raksha, I believe is how it's called. Um, anyways, let's skull for now. I think that's super set range. It is not. Wow, how many things do we need to get to bring it into range? Let's kill that out. Take a skull. Uh, that's Ubus that range for sure. Should have taken those reds there. Could just take an Ubus that instead. But we can also do it that way. And then the single skull kills as long as it doesn't agile it. Actually, that one doesn't have agile. The green one does. Alright, there we go. And the final two rooms. Then we gain our armor. Though we don't actually get armor until we take the chest. Because we don't gain the points until we take the chest. Even once we finish out the final room, we don't actually get the points until uh, we take the chest. Because the taking of the chest is the actual time when it gives you the points. Not when you complete out the room. Uh, let's see, we'll take that. Get a set there. Then we just have to deal with the last slot. Uh, come on now. Almost there. How are you not full mana? There we go. And then. Is it worth it to use gems on gem keys? Yes. Though you should only buy them in bulks of 50. It's actually one of the main things that you spend them on as you're progressing through the games is spending them on 50 bulks of gem keys because that's how you get a good majority of your mythics particularly if you have less than half the mythics in the game it's really good value to spend 50 bulks on gem keys you should only ever buy them 50 at a time though and the reason for this is they're cheaper if you do it that way they only cost nine gems each if you do buy them 50 at a time whereas normally they'd cost 10 gems each it's also whenever I calculate out the gem value for gem keys, you may notice I count them as 9 gems. And that's mostly because it's um, you should always be buying them in bulks of 50. There we go. And that time we went deathless. Which hopefully, or we should have done the first time, but oh well. Not that big a deal. So right here, we actually didn't gain the extra stat yet. If we go look at our stats, for example, like for this team. You can see that our Rowan is currently at uh, 67 armor. But uh, as soon as we go take this and take the chest, we'll uh, trigger the points. And that will make it so she has 68 armor right over there. So we'll take this, get our points, boom, we get 40 points. Rather than 30 because we didn't get Deathless on the previous one. And now instead of seeing 67, we should see 68 for our value. And there we go. As you can see, it's 68 armor now. And now we permanently have one armor for everything. So there we go. And that brings our total of extra stats from Delves up to uh, 2 attack, uh, 4 armor, and 4 HP. Uh, which means we have a really special thing coming soon. 44,000 will be the first instance we ever get plus one magic from Delves. If I'm not mistaken, that is actually currently possible if you had a uh, pure faction done on every faction. How many factions are there currently? There are one, two. Oh, this is going to be weird to count. What's the easiest way to count this? Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, let's, let's do it kind of by groupings. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17. Uh, what's 17 times 2,400? I believe it's currently possible. 17 times 2,500. Uh, no, never mind. It's not actually currently possible. After next delve, it is possible. However, you would need to have every single kingdom except for four at 2,500. Uh, are we at that point? Let me see. How many do I have that aren't? One two three four oh cool i would actually have enough to get it the next faction will actually be enough points for anyone who has all the factions except for four um would be enough points to get a uh, plus one magic next faction sweet wait is there 19 factions did i do that wrong what's 19 times uh did i miscount Oh, never mind. It's way higher than. You can see it in your profile. Uh, wait. Why is my number so far off then? Loading, loading, loading. Because we're not missing that many points. Hello, loading screen. Do you want to go? <laughs> not sure why it's taking so long. Yeah, there should be 17. I'm pretty sure I counted correctly. 
I believe there's 17 factions. Yeah, 17. There's 17 factions currently in the game. Which means max points right now is 7,250. Uh, uh, or sorry, 72,500. Which means next faction, we will be able to reach 45,000. Which means if you have every faction maxed, except for four, uh, and with those other four being at least um, um, 2,000, right? Yeah. No. Wait. Oh, we might not have enough points. Never mind. Because all of the other factions would have to be... Um, I would need one more pure faction between now and then in order to have that magic. Which means I need to go figure out a faction between then. Let's see. What was the most recent faction event this week? Wasn't it for warrants? So that means we should have Dark Pits soon. Maybe we'll go finally run Dark Pits pure faction. Because I believe we have Fang more and Dark Pits coming up soon. So one of these two I'm probably going to run Pure Faction for. Because I believe we need it to have enough points for um, for the extra magic. Otherwise, we're going to be ever so slightly short. Because we're going to be 350 short. Yeah, because especially because that one's a little bit lower. But yeah, we're going to be like a few hundred points short. If I don't end up getting one of these to Pure Faction. And even then, will we still be short? Because I would need to have... I have 1,000 points of leeway. So we have... Um, 350, 350, and 380. No! Even if we do another pure faction, we're still short. No! Rip. We'd have to do two pure, pure factions. On top of the pure faction we're currently doing. Between next faction to get that plus one magic. I'm not sure if that's worth it. However, we're going to have to do it eventually anyway. So maybe it is worth it. Because plus one magic is pretty valuable. However, spending that much gems that quick... It's going to be like another 5,000, 6,000 gems or so between now and next faction. Plus, we'll still have to throw a bunch for next faction. However, we would get one magic out of it. A permanent plus one magic. Which is obviously very, very nice to have. I don't know. We'll see. We're eventually going to need to do it anyway, so maybe we will. It might make my gem stack look very small. But um, I highly doubt they'll be adding anything anytime soon that's going to take tens of thousands of gems. But you never know, 5.0 patch could. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, we'll see. But, um, I don't know. We'll just have to d determine it then. Because I believe we can do Fang more and Dark Pits within the next week. Or, I mean, within the next month, I mean. Maybe even Sea of Sorrows, too. I don't know, maybe we'll finally get the really annoying Sea of Sorrows completed. It's probably the most annoying pure faction in the game, other than Werewo uh, Werewoods. Werewoods. But anyways, we'll worry about that later. But yeah, plus one magic soon. Next kingdom will make it uh, possible. Though you would need to have a lot of max kingdoms to do it. With uh, uh, that early. Otherwise you'd have to wait a whole nother month. What's the best way to get gems? Uh, the best way to infinitely get gems is to do treasure hunt. Treasure hunt can range from about 50 to 70 gems per hour. As far as overall gem value that you end up getting from it. Uh, even sometimes getting as high as like about um, about uh, 80 per hour. But a uh, basic premise is you just keep taking moves as quickly as possible. This does assume you have a surplus of treasure hunt or treasure map so that you can keep running it over and over again. But you basically take the quickest move you can and try ending the board with as many um, with as many uh, green chests as possible. You want pretty much the entire board to be uh, just green chests, essentially, if you can, uh, while taking moves as quickly as possible. And this is mostly just to get it so you keep cycling through them. And uh, that's pretty much all you have to do. Just keep aiming for green chests over and over again and... Um, just keep taking moves as quickly as you possibly can. And uh, this will end up giving you um, a decent rate of gems at about uh, approximately 50 to 70 per hour. It averages about one per map. Or at least one per minute or so. The maps themselves take about a minute to a minute and a half. Depending on like if it goes longer like this one or shorter like quite a few others. As you can see we'll get some amount of gems here. And we got four gems for that. And you just rinse and repeat and do that over and over again. And that will give you an average of about 50 to 70 gems value per uh, per hour. Assuming you have the spare maps. Other than that, taking Tribute is actually the overall highest rate of gems in the entire game. Uh, tribute, particularly later in the game, can give absurdly high amounts of gems. But how many kingdoms I currently have upgraded? We average easily over 10 gems per take. I believe currently around 12 gems with how high I am right now. Which means if I take Tributes uh, 10 times a day, I'm getting approximately 120 gems uh, just from taking Tribute throughout the day. And uh, that ends up being like almost a thousand gems per week uh, total. 
It's like, well, a little over 800 or so. So, um, yeah, you can get a lot of gems from that. You also get some gems from your guild and gem-related value. Uh, so as you're doing tasks in your guild, obviously blue task gives you a good majority of those gems. I believe 390 physical gems. But you also end up getting a lot of gem value through gem keys, through glory keys, through glory, and event keys and stuff like that that you also get through the guild. And gem value also helps you save on gems. So, for example, if you end up getting a bunch of gem keys, you don't need to necessarily spend as many gems for uh, when you want to go get new troops or when you're trying to get mythics. So it saves you gems indirectly. But, um, yeah, those are the main methods of gaining it. Mostly tributes and um, treasure hunts. But you also get some passively through your guild. And also another really good method is you get basically 20 free per day off of Adventure Board uh, by doing your top task. This can sometimes be 100 per day at a 5% chance as well. So always make sure you do this task every single day. Because it doesn't cycle to the next one until you do it. So always do it. And uh, you can also get it from these lower tasks. None of them currently have it today. But gem key is still a gem key. Which is technically worth 9 gems. But um, yeah this will also give you a little bit of gems each day. Anyways any other questions anyone? Otherwise I'm going to be heading out for now. Uh, we'll be back uh, tonight in about 5 hours from now. I'll be doing pretty much the same thing. Going a little bit into factions. Uh, we'll be doing Blue Guild War. Which will be the main thing we'll be doing tonight. Uh, we'll be, we will be using Vespera team for it. Testing it out again. See how it goes. Uh, for Blue Guild War tonight. And tomorrow we'll run uh, Vespera for Purple Guild War. Uh, technically we could run it for Yellow too. I don't think I'm going to run it for Yellow though. But uh, Blue and Purple we definitely will be. But this time being the first time we ever run her for Purple. Due to the fact we'll be using it with New Hero Class. And I'll have a video going over to New Hero Class sometime between... Uh, sometime tomorrow probably. Hopefully early tomorrow. Um, because I want to get that out. Um, so we can uh, go over to New Hero Class. I haven't gone over to Hero Class that came out while I was gone. And now's the perfect time. Because uh, obviously the main purpose of the New Hero Class is Purple Guild War Day. And this is our first Purple Guild War Day since it has been released. So I definitely want to cover that soon. And of course we covered a video on the most recent faction earlier in the stream. Uh, right before the stream. As well as during the stream. But you know before the stream we post a little video on it. So if you haven't checked that out there's that. And yeah that's pretty much the game plan. I also need to get the weekly event video out. It's mostly just going to be a recap of this week at this point to be honest. <laughs> but uh, yeah we'll get that out very very soon. But anyways guys. That'll wrap it up for this uh, stream. Hope you all had a good time. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Best of luck with the faction. Best of luck with pure faction because gosh that's going to be annoying. And uh, yeah, we'll be back in about five hours to go mess with uh, Blue Guild War for today and go a little bit deeper into faction. Then tomorrow morning stream, tomorrow afternoon stream, we'll go and get to uh, 500 and probably attempt pure faction 500 because that's definitely going to take multiple attempts and very long attempts to actually get that done uh, with how annoying the transform mechanic is going to be. But anyways, guys, enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much for stopping by. Leave a like if you enjoyed the stream and I'll be back soon. Goodbye, everyone. And thanks for watching.